Good evening and welcome to the Deerfield Board of Health uh, Select Board meeting November 7th, 2018 at 6 p.m. at the municipal offices on 8 Conway Street in South Deerfield. Uh, we'd like to start our meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. Would you please rise? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. This meeting is being recorded. Uh, first thing on our agenda is to approve the minutes of October 3rd. I make a motion to approve the minutes of October 3rd. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 I make a motion to approve the October 17th meeting. Second. Minutes. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. One more. Oh, oh, I forgot. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was it's okay. focused. Right. Um, Wendy, would you like to give us your report? Um, okay. Well, as usual, a lot of it's entwined in other things. Um, well, when Kevin gets here, um, besides these bridge reports that you've got, he'll speak to that. Uh, also, I just want to draw your attention to, and I sent it late in the day because it came late in the day, this issue around a connection fee. Um, I had council review it, um, and this has come up primarily because of the condo connection. Mm -hmm. And um, you have this yes. memo? Yep. So um, let's see, I have two different ones here. That in. Oh, right, I put his, that on top of his pile here. So he ba she basically finds no, no fault, um, in fact, you know, substance to what we've been doing and the interpretation of uh, the superintendent on uh, assessing these fees. Mm -hmm. So, it's, and it is... It's there according to our schedule, is that correct? Yes. 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 Right. Okay. That's good. So, um, and I think, you know, when you, he gets here. We can talk to him about yeah, that. Yeah, that's okay. what I think you should yep. do. Sounds good. Um, and then I have something else uh, that uh, about the question of um, assessments to, or betterments. Mm -hmm. uh, we need a bylaw to do that, and that's, I sent you that email. I read that. Um, so in order to do that with the particular matter with that pump station and the residents, um, we would need a bylaw in place. That's something we could put. To allow betterment charges for yes, specific it, it, items. Right, and we need to work with the assessors as well in doing that. Did but at speak, this point, we can't. Did you speak with the attorney as to how, how we can charge for that? That's what I'm saying. We'd have to do it through a bylaw with betterment. So we could do a betterment charge, but we'd have to have a bylaw. This is government, well. Kip. <laughs> I, I get it's government, but when that pump broke before, we charged everybody in town for it. And now it broke again. So in order to stop spending broke money again. over over, we, we spent more money. Right. Why? I mean, I don't understand why you can't charge. We don't need to call it a betterment fee. It's it's a repair related to that section of the community. But uh, so from what I understand, I agree. We should <coughs> adopt a, a bylaw so that we are able to section out betterments to different people. If, I read it quick. So I didn't have enough time to do it, um, but it makes sense to me to do. I just don't know if you're allowed by law to do it right now, but um, well, but it uh, makes sense to. Yeah, I explained in detail the situation that it was very. We could, you know, target and know, but um, we need to adopt a bylaw to uh, to to, to do this to do according to council. We wouldn't be able to back charge. No, but and I we can't we back. But we going can't. forward, it makes we, sense. Going to forward, we need to do this if it happens again. And also, there are other issues in other sections of town. Right. So I think having a general bylaw that allows us to section off certain payments that are are the fault of whoever that that section is. Or different different betterments right. that you're doing right. to some section of the of the system right. versus others. With the, that kind of bylaw. Um, take up would be in place of, say, a management area kind of fees? 
No, this is something different. So this is to make improvements to uh, to specific things, you know, specific areas. It's in the. Um, I, w I didn't expect us to discuss yeah, it further tonight. I just since it. it's been an ongoing conversation, without something in place, we can't just assess. Okay. I would say like you're us at fault, uh, you know, unless it's a, a, a damage, you know, like a uh, someone drove their car into a piece of property, and we have a clear, you know. Uh, problem well, like I'd that. Like, but like us, I would like us to pursue it. Read, read what I sent you. You know, yeah. I tracked this down. I'm sorry, it was later in the day. It wasn't on your agenda, but I'm trying to just move things forward. Right. There's so many things that we talk about that yeah. we need to close, put closure on. So, right. okay. Um, um, this isn't on the. Oh, we what can else wait do to I go have? down. Oh, to just I was just going to report. Um, the period of time for appeal of the Dumont expedited permit uh, has expired. No, no appeals. Great. And that's been filed in the registry. So wonderful. Um, that's good. Diana is away this week. I will be gone uh, the 19th, and I may not be here on the 28th. I come back on the 27th. That's your next meeting date. Okay. So, um, but What's the she date and I will have. Again? You're the 20th. On the 20th. I'm leaving. I won't be here from the 19th. From the 19th through the that, yeah. 28th. Right. I may be here on the 28th. Okay. Um, and I met. Uh, personnel board met Monday night. Um, they'll probably send you a recommendation, they did. but I can. They did. They did. Oh. did. I got that email. Okay. Yep. I didn't. <laughs> today. They okay. Sent it today. Well, I didn't see it, but I'm assuming um, uh, what it was see. about benchmarking the cola to the. CPIU Northeast CPI. Yeah. yeah. Does okay. That, um, and I it, it that, happens to be ten two percent. I I, <laughs> that, I think that's the one that after many many discussions that was seemingly the best one for us. Mm -hmm. So I'm that's glad used they by other communities. The thing is, uh, um, uh, at your meeting on the twentieth, you should decide whether you want to uh, what you want to do with their recommendation. On the twenty eighth. Yes, and the recommendation was already made to you okay. about steps for everybody except colas for people who have reached, will be reaching their 10 year. So our next meeting is only the 28th? Yeah. No, we don't have one for three weeks. Well, ha there's Thanksgiving week, which is it's sacrosanct. It's Thanksgiving. <laughs> okay. Somebody's baking sticky buns. No, I'm, just, I'm having 24 people. And most of them are staying at the house, so I'm cooking and cooking well, and cooking. That would be nice. But oh, I have yeah. to clean, clean, clean you first. You have to have 26. Like have 26. <laughs> <laughs> the other things I will speak to during the meeting, um, we have the warrant. Um, hopefully, December 3rd works for all of you. It's been reviewed again. I have the legal ad ready to go. And if you'd like to... Sign that's still working on the motion on capital planning. Um, if, um, if we're doing it December 3rd, would you let the planning board know when they have their meeting Thursday? Because they'll assume that the planning board meeting is it's, that Yeah, Monday. it's already, yeah. Well, Kip knows. <laughs> What's right. the? Sure, just, I can tell John. When's the planning board meeting? That night. So they'll have to. They're meeting on to December 3rd? They, they meet the first Monday of the month. I know, but they've been having meetings all over the place because they have so much work on there. Right. Yeah. I, Does it say, Kip, when they're... No, mm -hmm. but I, 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 can, I will let John know. Okay. I can, too. Regular touch with him. Um, so, yeah, if you'd like to formally cancel and then reschedule the, and we the should sign the warrant it's the same warrant um post other as many places or get the word out i noticed we should tell as many people like that other one was canceled right yeah that's already up yep. on the website Perfect. the postings Great. were taken down there, okay. were, there was no special vote uh registration last right. night okay. i will be here that night just to make sure and be kind to anyone gotcha. who shows up who didn't read we everything could. so okay be here that night, meeting the fifteenth. Oh no, I won't be. Will I? Yeah, I will be. I yeah. will be here. The only the only good thing about moving it is I was actually there is about, a good thing. The ZBA is very excited because they wanted that date for a meeting. So yeah, and I was worried I might not get back from Boston that day. Oh, so see for the MACD meeting. It's your car. All works for a reason. Mm -hmm. So do so you, if do you, you want to sign a, the warrant, you want need a motion to 
to vote? Uh, why don't okay. you first formally cancel the... Uh, so I make a, a motion to cancel a special town meeting, which was scheduled for December, uh, Thursday, December... No, uh, no, excuse no, me, no. Thursday, November 13th. 15th. 15th. <laughs> we'll get it right. <laughs> um, so again, I make a motion to cancel the special town meeting that was scheduled for um, November 15th, which is a Thursday. I'll second that. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And uh, then I would make a motion to um, to ha to a vote to, uh, make a motion to vote to have our special town meeting rescheduled for December third. Um, I second that. Is there any further discussion? No. Nope. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And, uh, and do we need to vote on the... Yeah, just sign a couple of the yep. warrants. You've got, if you want to each sign two. We... I've got one here if you want. We okay. don't need a whole punch one. Yeah, maybe you want sign? Uh, what two is plenty. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we're um, we are no longer going to put days in meeting dates, right. Does any, mean, as as that is over. Is there, we're good. We were stopping doing that with select board meetings, and now we're going to. No reason to have it on the town meeting one. It's just that in our bylaw, it says the last Monday. For annual oh. town meeting, so that kind of stays in the template there. So, <coughs> gotta be careful. Things have come and gone during the week about other things that we could add, but uh, they're gone, so I'm not going to even talk about those. Thank you. Welcome. You have three for good measure. Posterity. Yep. Okay. Um, Hexagon is not coming. Uh, the, the, we thought the, <coughs> the assessors and uh, the Hexagon Solar had reached a pilot agreement, but uh, something has come up, and they're back in negotiating that. Okay. So just, you know, I've asked this question. Um, actually, I asked it of Sarah Bel Attorney <coughs> Bellina when I was talking about sewer things today. Um, what happens, a lot of these solar companies, we had a, a huge turnout yesterday for, not yesterday, Monday, for the bidders conference for the landfill, solar on the landfill. And there's a lot of um, anxiety, not ang well, I'll use that term, to move forward on these projects. We've got two other active projects going on and, you know, moving forward in town. Plus, I heard about a third on uh, private land. Um, so, folks, these uh, companies are trying to get in under this new SMART program that mm -hmm. exists. Um, I don't know. I think it's at their own risk, but. Um, the these pilot agreements that they all want um, need to, um, and we, it's in our interest as well, need to go through town meeting. So they can be negotiated with the assessors and then come to you and you sign off as well, but they still need to go to town meeting for approval. So what happens if we don't, are we going to have to have a town meeting for all these um, things? I, or? I'm waiting wait? to hear back from Beth Greenblatt, who, who's, yeah. okay. but I did, at, we, Sarah Bellina and I <sighs> talked about it today and she thought it's kind of they go ahead at their own risk, although, you know, it, I think it's highly likely that a pilot agreement will pass town meeting if it's, yeah. you know, the assessors and the select board has agreed to it. Yeah. I guess the option is nothing for the town, you know, if you right. don't have some kind of an agreement. Yeah, so okay. so it's in there. It's everybody's interest. But I'm, I'm waiting for to see if I get more answers on that. Okay. Um, okay. Sounds good. So that's on the agenda but off the agenda. All My right. Nook Road update, Yeah. nothing new from um, I last informed you and sent you the email that I sent to Pine Nook, I mean to um, Eversource. <laughs> Eversource. I said that... Um, we want our check. Yeah, I let them know that, um, you know... Um, I can't believe they were holding back money from us. Well, apparently that was a verbal conversation, but it was never memorialized in writing in subsequent leases. So haven't heard a word out of them. They were emailing me almost every other day, and now I've not heard anything. So uh, if you would like, I can send. Um, I actually said that they could have their council talk to our council. But if you'd like, I can send the, um, the letter from council to them. I don't know how you guys feel about it, but as far as I think that the town should not get involved with any sort of maintenance thing. No. And if they push okay. that too hard, then I think that we should 
renegotiate the whole leasing. Well, Kip, we, we don't need to. I, um, just what what um, I sent to you all was that councils read through the lease. Mm -hmm. There's nothing about that. And that not only should we not contribute, um, they owe us money from right. having deducted it. So I think individually I've heard from each of you um, there's no interest the in doing it. It's not a town-owned way. We don't use that road. I did call um, Craig Warner. I have his name right. Yes, Delta yeah. Sand yep, and Gravel. Yeah, right. Kind of alerted him that this is going on and that he's the other user of the road. So, um, and I think I let Eversource know that I is that been road in, touch with in bad shape. Yes, it's in bad shape. It's, weird. I to it's not. It's the, it's the access. No, it's, it's not, not Pine Nook Road. It's an access road right. that goes from Pine Nook. What, up to what the happened tower. is is what happened, Trevor is. The, you know the storm. You know when we have these, they wash out the tire tracks. Yeah, it washes out, and so it's it's not impass. It's not so bad that they can't get up there, but it's they getting worse. Someone. And it, someone should do something if they want to continue using the road, because it's only going to get worse. Because it started the wash. So when we have you know two or three inches an hour. Yeah. Rain. That's just going to make it wash more because it's you know it's gravelly. Easy they so move, they so. could go every year if they went with one or two truckloads of hard pack, and they put it in there that would secure Absolutely. it. Absolutely. And you know yeah. it would cost them you know three four hundred dollars, and in a matter of five years they would almost have a, a black tar. Or like road. Millings, right? Yeah. yeah. Like exactly. Millings. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's town property all the way up there. Is that that right? Is that right? The. I don't think the road is. I think the um, who owns the road? It must be town property. No, because it's not a public way. It's not a public way. It's not a public well, way. Who owns the land? It's a private way. I think the abutters. Don't yeah, they? I think it's just it has. It's a. But right we own way. the land that the tower is on. Up there, but yeah. not not the road itself. I I yeah, we, I we do can't not believe it's a private. It's a public way because that was where one of the basis of the discussion. Well, was. we own and if Kevin, land around it. If Kevin could talk more to this, we, than we I own up at the top. Yes. But we don't. I just wonder: Do we own the whole mountaintop, or do we? What, where do we? Where's our boundary? So, you have to pull a map. Okay. Next but to not, Delta Sand not, and not the whole road. <laughs> Uh, okay, that's I wasn't sure. I didn't know what we owned no. for property yeah. up there. We, ha we have, and we have, a, we have, like three parcels up there. Yeah, we can't improve uh, no. private properties. Uh, oh. Okay, Kevin will be here in two minutes. Okay, um, okay. <laughs> our, we have three parcels up there. There's some rare ferns and some good stuff up there, mm -hmm. but we haven't done anything. And and so, Lynn, I know Lynn Rose was trying to get somebody from UMass to take it on as a class. To manage to, the property. To manage it. Yeah. And, you know, do a management design. I remember you talked about forestry that. Forestry plan, and then we could apply through NRCS to do some kind of forest management and make it accessible to people. But, you know. Low I, priority. Yeah. Yep. I, I don't want to pay to hire someone to do it. Of course. Because it's, yeah. it wouldn't be a lot, but it yep. would be like $5,000 kind of thing. That mm -hmm. seems what foresters charge. And there's for. a lot of other places we could put five grand. Yeah. Well, yep. We have enough schools around here that someone should be able to do a, a, a basic design, mm -hmm. you know, management plan, and mm -hmm. then you you can use it to to apply for money through NRCS. Well, related to that, I spend a great deal of time finishing off this tree grant uh, and submitted that last week, and um, I think there's enough interest in town that um, it would be worthwhile having a tree committee. Um, advisory tree committee that um, could follow through with the inventory work and this tree grant and supporting fundraising for the trees and picking up a project like you're talking about. So I'm just putting that out there for your consideration. Well, many, maybe, many towns do have can, tree committees. Yes. Well, maybe then we can ask people if they're interested because there is, you have forest management plans, you have, there's cottontail habitat, you know, money. Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of money out there for this stuff. Right. So. Just need some people interested yeah, to take do. it on. Yeah. yeah. We've done a lot of good work. That's for you, Kevin. We were just talking about that. Oh, Welcome, okay. Kevin. How you doing? Hi, good. Hi How Kevin. You? Thank you for coming. Sure. Sorry it took me a while. I was trying to review everything that we probably wanted to talk about tonight. Yeah. So. No worries. Um, first, though, I just finished talking, and I said let's talk more when Kevin gets here. Um, the memo from council, which came in late later today after you and I spoke, basically backing up. No, I, uh, I went through all the paper, all the uh, emails so far, and I made copies of them. Okay. Okay. 
So that's an extra copy so there for so you. So you're all set with that, Kevin, right? Yeah, so I should be online with that. Um, okay. The long and the short is, is, is it works out to $154,000. Um, it's 110 gallons for, a day. For Sugar Loaf Estates. Yeah, for Sugar Loaf Estates. The, is that the actual name, the condominium project? Sugar um, I believe that's what it is. It's, uh, and, I think they have the condominiums at Sugar Loaf, actually. Per bedroom. Correct. 110 yeah. gallons a day per bedroom. Uh, back April 22nd, 2015, the select board uh, set it at $10 a gallon, yeah. which basically works out to $1,100 per bedroom. Um, 35 lots, four bedrooms per lot, 140 bedrooms, $154,000. Um, originally, it was... Uh, requested possibility of cutting in half, which was $77,000. And to be honest with you, I do not feel that it is fair to change what we already have as a written policy. Yep. Uh, simple fact is, is and, and I know Mark, I like Mark, but the bottom line is that at the end of the day, $77,000 goes into his pocket. And to be honest with you, with the Conditions of our sewer system with the wastewater treatment plants, that $77,000 would be better for the district. No. Nope. Um, or excuse me, the um, wastewater users, per se. And these fees were, were to be paid, you know, per unit as they come online, right? Not all that at once. That is correct. And, right. and that was one of the things that I made a recommendation, yeah. is, is as each of the... Um, request for occupancy permit would be to go ahead and pay at that point in time. And, I mean, and I understand, you know, he's, he's laid out a whole boatload of money mm -hmm. to put in the infrastructure. Yeah. But that would be the same thing as if um, we were to go ahead and put in a, um, we wanted sewer out at Yellow Farm Road. Mm -hmm. So all of those people would pay we're just going to say there's 100 places there, mm -hmm. and it was $100,000. So you would break up the $100,000 by the 100 people that are there for the cost of bringing it there, which is the same as the developer mm -hmm. installing the plus, they would still have the hookup fee. The hookup fee, right. So, so it's one of the same. So according to the lawyer, um, basically they state that uh, reviewed the connection fee policy and find it in substance. It is fair and well within the bond, uh, bounds of the discretion within the sewer commission. Uh, using the Title V guidelines, basically uh, it, there's, if, if, it was, if it was to be challenged, <laughs> right. um, it would. Just speaking with Dave Listen, Prickett, listen we, we paid for someone, we, we did a lot of research, we did a lot of work, we paid to have someone review it and we adopted it years ago. Well, speaking, so. speaking with Dave Prickett during all this evaluation of our, of our infrastructure, he thinks that rate's extremely low. Um, uh, well, actually, I, I was I on the phone for probably about 45 minutes to an hour with Dave tonight. Okay, because he and said that's an area where you could... That was, well, one of the things I think he still had it in his head that we were still a little bit behind the eight ball. Mm -hmm. You know, as far as the low low end costs, and when I explained to him that basically works out to eleven $1 hundred dollars per oh, bedroom, okay. he goes, "That's a little low." He says, "But it's a lot better than what it was." Good, because before it was it was twenty five dollars, which was Crazy. foolish. Absolutely, I mean, you can't do anything for twenty five dollars. Right. But that was why we did that because that, that was part of of trying to get re us ready for um, applying for a grant. Because when we went to look for grants. Um, they laughed at us. They said your hookup thing is 25 bucks, and your rates are the lowest in the, next to the lowest in the whole state. Then you know you you don't need us to give you grants, and so that was why we started this work. Exactly. Um, would you like to continue? So what, can a little you bit repeat? I'm going to for the minutes just what your proposal for the the payment plan would be uh, per units com uh, completed. Is that what you were when proposing? They go, when they go to the occupancy current permit before when they, they go get for a an signature. occupancy permit. Yep then whatever bedrooms or units they're looking for. Mm -hmm. So basically it would be, it would be $2,200 a unit. Mm -hmm. Right. And there's two units per building. So for each building that they want to put in would be $4,400. You know, and realistically, and again, you know, I'm not debating about how much money he should make or how much he shouldn't make or how much he's paid, um, but realistically the low end is $299,000 a unit. 
to $379,000 a unit. Um, and to be honest with you, my own personal opinion as, as a rate payer, because I'm on the system myself also, uh, $2,200 is, is pretty cheap. You know, realistically, if you went ahead and you took 140 units and you went ahead and said, we need to go ahead and put in a septic system. Mm. Fortune. Three to $5 million. Is by the time he got through messing around with everything, is ballpark what it would cost to go ahead and install a system that would be able to handle everything that they have. How much land would be lost because of the Mount Flushmore that you would have to build mm -hmm. um, to allow everything to be, <laughs> to be taken. Because of our high water table, you would have to have extremely large um, above ground um, areas. So it's, it's, it's actually, it's, it's cheap money in the long run. So the know. payments, that, that would be the total amount at full build out? At full build out per, per unit. There's two bedrooms per unit. Mm -hmm. So it'd be $2,200 per unit. Mm -hmm. and, and the payments would be made per, when the occupancy permit, before because it's, it's a signature. previous to That's the occupancy permit. That's what I'm trying to yeah, get a handle on for the signature. minutes. Correct. Correct. Is the, okay. and, and the reason why I say previous to, and, and by no means am I trying to say that he would do this, but as information was given to me out in Great Barrington, there was a hotel out there that said, yeah, we need our occupancy permit. They got their occupancy permit. They owed um, them somewhere in the vicinity of $210,000. And then they gave him the occupancy permit. And then they said, hey, you owe us money. He's like, I already got it. See ya. Mm -hmm. And there was nothing they could okay, do about so it. So prior to the occupancy permit. So prior to the occupancy units. permit okay. being signed by the building commissioner. Correct. Then my opinion is, is the check should be here at town hall paid okay. before it is signed. Are you asking for a letter from the board to um, Mr. Whiteman? That would be helpful, then that way it's, it's, it's documented. It's not a he said, she said. I want to make sure, it, the long and the short is, is if it's not in writing, it doesn't exist. Agreed. Well, the, the rate fee is in writing. It is, but what I'm saying is, is the agreement that we're having with him, to I mean, because otherwise you'd be saying, we need $154,000 so today. That's on, okay. Yeah, that's not. I mean, because he, he, technically he's already hooked to the sewer. He's right. He's already tied into the main. Correct. Right. I, I, so. I get it. I get it. The only thing I wanted to add to this, and not that I'm 100% against that, is that I don't think that it's fair to say that he's going to take the money and put it in his pocket. It's the money is coming out of everybody who buys a unit there. Correct. That's Correct. where it comes from. Correct. Yep. And that, uh, you know, I, I understand the whole thing about this, but on the other hand, once that development is all done, the town's going to be making forty to fifty thousand dollars a year income for the which system. which is part of your O and M. I get that. It. That is what your but usage we, fees are for O and M. I get nothing it. to do with capital. But what we do now do with is we up. give businesses these tips where we are basically giving them thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars to put in a, a building in town because we we know we're going to be getting you know taxes from them going forward. So. It's just a different way of looking at it. Mm -hmm. you know. no, I, I understand where yeah. you're coming from. Um, but the bottom line is, is so, so if that's the case, then if I decided to go ahead and build a two-bedroom house, I'd go in and say, well, you know what? You gave him a 50%. So here, here's a check for $1,000 because you did it for him. So now you have to do it for me. Oh, yeah, so if you're going to have a policy, you have to follow the policy. If you decide to change the policy, that is completely up to the board. But you have to make a change to the policy because as soon as you start making concessions, then you have to make the concessions for everyone. All right. That, so that would be so the only with point that I'm argument, how does Cumberland Farms come back to us and say we want a tiff on our building because you gave one to these people? I, I, that, that's, that's completely ass. between you and them. All yeah, I'm concerned about right now, because this is underneath that. my yeah. purview, is but, the sewer. Right. Tiff is so. different than well, sewer. it's basically it's an enticement to get people to develop property in our town mm -hmm. and that we gain tax dollars in, in, an, in an area that doesn't generate more services, you know? Mm -hmm. And that, that's my only, what I'm saying. But I hear you. Like I said in the beginning, I'm not opposed to the whole thing. Right. I just Making need to look point. at it. Yeah. Do you want to vote to? Um, would you like me to kind of can follow up a little bit more vote on the sewer stuff? Vote to support? We already well, I'm voted good. on this. Okay. Yeah. On what? So, uh, I'll work with you to get a letter draft. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. Good. Um, again, talking with Dave uh, this evening, we are on schedule 
for the end of this month to be able to go ahead and put in the applications for the USDA uh, grants. Um, a question came up um, from a resident, and, and it was a great question. You know, uh, it was about funding going out 40 years. Mm -hmm. You know, do we really want to go out 40 years? Well, the reason why we're we're talking 40 years is going with a 45 percent grant from USDA. Right. With that being said, there's nothing saying that we have to wait 40 years to pay it off. Correct. There is no prepayment penalty penalties if we make well, two payments well, I, I, a month. I think, the observation, I think the observation is that we could look at what we're doing at the plant and if, if the lifespan I mean, we haven't really done much with that plant for 40 years. So yeah. I think 40 years in general is okay, except for the improvements that don't have a lifespan of 40 years. Correct. And so I like, those if things. like paving, the paving part or whatever, mm -hmm. something like that, we should pay with with our operational costs or but to get or, the grant or, or from our what we raise in our mm -hmm. own capital because why would we want to pay for something 40 for 40 years when we have to do it like every. Five well, and speaking years. with right. Dave, our, the discussions with USDA is that we're going for a 40 year so that we get yeah. that grant and then we can choose to pay it off however we want. Right. right. The, because and that way we, it's, it's set at your, your years of payment, right. which sets your percentage rate, which sets your grant at maximum, percentage. At the maximum. We, help. What we want is the 2% and we want the max grant, which right. is... Four, four million, four and a half million, 45. or whatever it is. I mean, you can, you can, you, you, what I don't know exactly what the payment would be, but hypothetically, I mean, if you wanted to and if you had the money, you could pay the thing off in 10 years or 20 years. Well, you can make double well, payments. You know, you I can mean, make double payments without a problem. Like a, but this is the right, overall right. general format of so how we mean they're looking to, to head that direction. And we're, st we're still going to put a group together to nail out that that calendar of payments like what what's going to be out that far what we need to do we still have a lot of work to do and looking night, for another Thursday another night meeting. is the, at the FERCOG is that financial management um, class that um, I don't know if you did you sign up for it I, I signed up for it we could bring that up well it's not capital planning next it's Thursday basic basic no but they'll have stuff. someone you mean there tomorrow night the yeah yes tomorrow well, night tomorrow night so is it Kevin, my DLT question is no, that's next week. Mass DOT is next week. Is there another oh, okay. small group, or what? what's between now and them bringing a grant proposal, a, a lo grant loan proposal before the yeah, sewer we, commissioner's board? Here? We, need, we need another meeting with Dave. I, I, okay. I am not aware of any scheduled. Nothing is scheduled for right. this point. Okay. So maybe we could reach out to Dave and schedule that um, working group again? Yeah, that we too. can do that. Now, are we looking for the small group again? Yeah. Yeah, there was a lot of um, input. Mm -hmm. at that hearing, at that workshop that, that like we had, yeah. and uh, subsequent more information, which I've forwarded, so I'd like a response to yeah. to that. Um, yeah. I think the board would like that, right? Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. there's some questions I still so, have. Yeah. It would be yeah. very beneficial is if we can have the questions ahead of time and then yep. go ahead and ship it down to him so that way and we, I sent we have. He's, he's, he's able I to thought. go ahead and answer yep. all the questions. It, yep. just, it just makes things move so much smoother and quicker. And right. Yeah, the working group has been going. Perfect. Well. Um, well, I don't want mean to interrupt, but where does that leave the sewer study committee, and do we want to continue with that? I do. I do. I want them to come. Because it's, it's just, they're an advisory group to us right. in the sense that there's no, they don't have any power, but they certainly have, I mean, most of them are interested and... And, and we and really appreciate more, more people involved in the decision-making process. I mean, ultimately, it's our decision. Right, right, of course. But the more people involved, the more opportunities we have to have a better decisions and to under, have people understand what we're trying to do. And, and Eric I, and Josh didn't get a chance to come to that thing. I'd love to have another meeting where they had some input. And I, you know, I talked to Eric as well, and I wanted to get him some data. So I wanted to have another meeting with Dave. Mm -hmm then kind yeah. of bring back another work group, you know, with everybody again. So everyone's just kind of in the process on the way through with this yeah. whole thing. I think thing. that that board or committee, however you want to look at it, is uh, feeling a bit frustrated because, you know, they, they don't feel like they can have a meeting because you wanted all of us to be involved. And mm -hmm. if they want to have a meeting on a Wednesday when you're in Boston, it, it's not going to happen. 
So, you know. Well, yep. the, they're not supposed to have meetings without us. We're all supposed to meet together. Well, but, but that's something that you said. And now they're saying, well, you know, Carolyn just basically took it away from us. That, you know, mm -hmm. why even have this committee? We can't even meet without her approval or, or you know, being there. And, and well, it seems. Well, the sense I got. Then from, they don't need to come. Not, but I yeah. would hope he that they would know. come. I would hope they would come. But I guess my point is, why not? Why can't they do their own work as well? Because we need to all be together all the time, so we have what the would same they do? information, okay. the same perspective, the same discussion, and we're not having these all these side discussions that don't go anywhere. Well, we are on the route to make decisions, and so if they want to be involved, they need to come. We'll have discussions. We're certainly open to having them come and be together. And, and make decisions and listen to their input, but, but so, we're but moving forward. I guess my this point is here is they're, they're not a committee. They're just resident, concerned residents that can attend this, these meetings that we have. But I think, I think well, in the future, as, you know, during, you know, just in my, my thought process is in the future as, as the project goes on, I, I would, there might be areas where they would take over a section and kind of run with a certain part of the construction part or get other feedback or like, do work, or, or research, do work outside our research, committee and yeah. our commission and then bring that information back to us for I guess for I'm thoughts. not doing a good enough job explaining no, the frustration. I, I know and what you have. I, I've when, talked to Bruce a lot when, about that. When I, when I was on that board. Many multiple discussions. All right. When I was on the, that committee, the, the biggest reason that I, you know, removed myself is that because I felt like I, I was a conflict between that committee and this, this board. And, you know, the, the whole thing is that committee came to what they felt was um, a stopping point because none of them had the, all of the experience needed and they wanted somebody like Dave Prickett to come in and give uh, a road map. Well now, the, the plan is put forward that, all right, this is what we're going to do and how are we gonna pay for it? And that, that's not what they wanted to do. They wanted to, how can we go about and what's the, the most important thing? You had a, a breakdown of, you know, uh, what levels of things, and they were going to work with Dave and, and say, okay, we can do this, we can do that, and that's not the way it's happened. It's like, here it is, we're going to start in this phase and go all the way out through six years, and this is how we're going to do it. So what do they need to be here for? Do you, do you see what I'm trying to say? Yes, so. but I, 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 th I hope and they, they want to be involved, and, and we will continue, but Ultimately, it's our decisions, and I get that. And so we have to do the work, we have to have the discussions, and okay. we have to do the research. Okay. And I don't feel comfortable not being involved and then making a decision. Uh, it's very complicated, and and that's and that's why I want everyone to be together when we have discussions because it's it, it you know we're talking millions of bucks, and, and, and we all are paying including all of us that are not on the septic system. Well, I mean, not on the sewer. So guess what? We want to make the most effective, decisive decisions that's in the, in the best interest of the town. And okay. so why you removed yourself, that's wonderful in the sense that, you know, you didn't want to have continued conflict, but we need to be together on the same page. And so if they're frustrated, I understand if they don't want to come anymore, but I would hope that they do want to come and they do want to have input and they do want to listen to the information and, and, and be part of the decision. I'm, I'm, yes, we are the responsible final vote, but I am certainly open to everybody discussing it and everybody having input and, and having... I, I think I mean, part of their frustration too, and I, I have a little bit of this because it's, um, you know, Dave's, you know, we, he's got this plan laid out we all looked at it. We thought that makes sense, but there may be aspects, and this is probably where Kip's getting at and some of the board members, there may be aspects of that that nobody agrees with or we want to do differently or there's a lot of minutia and things that need to be adjusted around in that plan. I don't want 20 people picking this thing apart so it just gets so crazy and out of control and nobody has a decision and you know, right. it just falls apart. Like, oh, we can't afford it, we can't do this. But I do want them to study it all, look at it and say, look, and, and if we get consensus that says, look, it doesn't really make sense to do this or you're way outside the range of what this should really cost, Dave. And I think Dave was kind of narrowing that down to 
more than a back of the envelope, but there was still a lot of work to be done. And I think right. there was a kind of just lay out, okay, this is about what we think it's going to be, but there's, I'm, I'm envisioning more meetings, more workshops to, to really get into the nitty gritty Absolutely. and say, okay, you gave us three pages and it says, or t 10 pages, but there should be, you know, a hundred pages here of schematics and this and that. And I, I think that gets into more of the design stuff and, and the design work. And I and feel later. very okay. That's later, right? And it's not, I don't want to dig, yeah. mess and everybody I've, up with all the nitty gritty right away. Uh, but we do need to look at that and it needs to be and, important well, discussions and, to have. And I, I feel like this is such huge money that, I mean, absolutely, we got we to gotta put the time into it to know what's going on and mm -hmm. know that, I need to know before I vote yes that we are certainly going to do, we're making the best decision for us. And we're us. not wasting money or and doing larger stuff. we're not wasting money, stuff. we're not wasting resources, nothing. Can I ask you a question, just for mm -hmm. clarity, because I'm hearing two to three different things here. Yep. Kip, what would you like to see the committee do? I think that the, I would like to see the committee sit down with Dave or and, and meet with them, but I'd like the committee on them, their own when they can get together to work on these different details. One of the things, there's two because big that's things. that's different what, than what you've said before. No, not really. I didn't. wanted the committee to work, not, not that they have to work outside of the sewer commissioners, but I don't want them nailed down to, well, if, if we can't meet with them, they can't meet at all. You know, and especially with uh, Josh and um, um, yeah, I can't do that. <laughs> Anyways, they, these people do this for a living, you know, um, and yeah, they they are much better equipped to see these plans Eric. than we are, <laughs> yeah. you know. And what I I'm afraid that might happen is like the first time. And it just rolls away, right. and everybody. So, get engineers yeah, I get say, that. This is this, this is it, and we're gonna go from here. We're gonna go so, from there, and it's like, wow, I, you know. And that's where my question came well, from because I thought so the first time either, but it did. I suspected that, and that's why I asked yeah. my question about we need to know what we, we how we get from here to there because you then, said that they're gonna right. no no problem they're gonna have something that made us all feel like, well what be, what's gonna happen what's, between now what's and then in it? Yeah. and so I think when we get a clearer picture of that we'll figure out where they plug in the advisory right. committee yeah. exactly and how and areas for input meanwhile I just want to you know again say that everything that came in afterwards you got stuff you got I got stuff all has been shipped it. to yeah. them to Dave Prickett so that he knows the questions that have come up from mm -hmm. Eric and from Josh and, and other members of the committee so um, okay, I just wanted to clarify that because I, mm -hmm. I, I, I really think that it's important to get out the sure. underlying issue, which is the concern that we're, we're going to end up back where you started from and no with a big stop. plan and it's expensive and it's, it's, it's people have disagreements about it. So yeah. it all needs I to think be we need out. to come up with a, get a, a tighter schedule together if they really think they can get that done by then. What's going to happen in between and where are the, where are the opportunities for input from people who have, who have good, good ideas and knowledge and experience? So. so so, here's my question is, is which part, I mean, because right now they're pretty much focusing on the grant part of it, okay, which, well the, which, is, which is huge. Well, that, the right? question that, is, did they feel they had um, a, a consensus to go forward with the plan that they presented? That was a general consensus that we had at that meeting, at least that was what I had in because it kept the question kept being asked are we going to have this so, done by December right, and we said okay. yes we will which pretty much told me move forward so the, so if we're not supposed to move forward I need to know no, now no no I think we I think we are but and I and I, from what I understand is say miraculously we get this you know soft yes and then a whatever there's there's ways to the okay so we're getting this it looks good Let's let's sit down now the, and look through this and, and do we really need this? Do we need that? I mean, not that we're going to pick apart everything, but just to have some good knowledge and adjust that dollar amount and scope project as we start going through it. Because we can't just go, okay, well, we applied for this. We have to do all, like a library. Right. You've got to have 6,000 square feet, and right. that's well, that. The, you the, know. the issue that is concerning a lot of them is that um, the, the presentation, although... I find it it was fine to a degree. 
it left out 90% yeah. of the details. Correct. You know, well, that's because the details have not been Exactly. That's, that's where well, that's exactly. nervous. There, there still that's, was a lot of that, detail. That, it just wasn't gone into at the meeting. Yeah, right. That's where your engineering right. comes in. That's where your, that's right. your, your right. plans come in. But how so they came up with those recommendations was also okay. created, but they didn't, it was a generic, not yeah. generic, but so they, general. I think they, some of the people on the committee, well, maybe a lot, um, but some of the more engineered mind or, you know, run plant minds, want to see like the nuts and bolts and all the stuff that right. went into that. So right. I think that's why they're hesitant. Like, what are we going for? We haven't seen, how do you know they really know what they're doing? How do, well, you know, so it's a lot of questioning and I think some, we can flush that out. And and well, we can get happen. it to them. Yeah, that exactly. Is, that we're, we're doing the first phase. Yeah. Exactly. But that it, was what the consensus that, was. That was my general understanding. Yes. This first phase was moving forward. Yeah. Well, the, 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 what we heard, or at least what I heard and some of the other people heard, I didn't learn anything. Everything that they told us mm -hmm. was in the report before. I was looking for more of the nuts and bolts, like, you know, the size, how many gallons, and, you know, all the little the size of pipes, pumps, and the whole, you know. So and I understand that that's not, not here yet, but that's kind of where I was saying the sewer study people and those could get involved with that deeper than, than we could. But that's your design, yeah. which, is, which is the next step. Yeah. yeah. And, that, we'll and that's part that can be paid for by the grant. Correct. So I mean, that's right why. Because right now we don't have full funding by any means for anything for for the full engineering because that could be anywhere between arbitrary numbers don't anybody in the world hold me to these numbers <laughs> we know. anywhere said, between 50 and a and hundred thousand dollars bar arbitrary yeah. arbitrary numbers yeah but so no, the way, that's normal that's so so the way it stands right now is talking with dave if there is a true commitment from the town he has no problem moving forward right. on good faith that we will pay him when we can. Understanding the fact that because of how we have changed it, our, our financials within the system, you just can't go in and grab money anytime because the system is set up more as a true town system right. where you have to wait for free cash to be available right. and or it has to be part of your standard operating budget. Right which it, neither, neither one of right those now. has yes. at this point in time. Correct. Till so, and, and again, he, he, he came right out and said, you know, uh, I will have no problem working with you and moving forward with this. Right. So long as- He mentioned that to me too. So long as we got the, yeah, we'll, we'll pay well, you. we would still need some sort of a contract. With oh, of course, yes. we still have to have a contract. And, and so the contract would still have to be signed. Right. But it would just be a deal of, all right, well, here's my contract, but I'm not asking for my 50% up right now. Right. You know? and I think so he would be willing to go ahead and do that, which yeah. I think is great I, because there's a lot of people out there that won't. And to be honest with you, there's a lot of people that we have kind of alienated and I think some, as far as engineering firms. I so, think the pre-meetings, Kevin, with, with, with him is going to be, you know, the, the, the flushing out, I think, over the next several weeks, months, as we start rolling this through is really what the sewer committee and, and a lot of the, the minds really want to see. And I, I do too. I mean, I kind of, I feel good about where we're mm -hmm. going and I feel like it's the right thing. And I just want to, I want to make rest some people, have people uh, rest easy that we are doing due diligence and we're getting all the data that they want to them as well, because I do value immensely their knowledge and of input course. and, 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 and I can't know all that as well, but I want to know as much as I can, but just to, to get their advice on this too. Not enough to just monkey everything up, but I mean, enough to have them have good oversight. We need good oversight of the project. It's huge. And right. um, I, I really respect all of their knowledge and I want them well, involved the most, in it. The most important thing is for us to get that application in because the money is gonna go like a flash. And I don't know if we really are going to, maybe with Democratic House now, there will be an infrastructure um, you know, program, but I'm not sure. This is the first time there's been money for the USDA for two years. Right. So this is huge. So this is why we've got to get in line for this money. And then we can always adjust. Yeah, I, I mean, that's what I, mean, I feel like, you can adjust. I mean, we all, we all pretty much know that this is not gonna be a $20 deal. Absolutely, you know, and we're committed to doing you know, the right we, thing. We are talking millions of dollars, you know, I mean, I don't want to spend millions of dollars. I'm, of I'm a rate payer. You know, do I yep. want to see my rates go but up? No, but I also understand reality too. Mm -hmm. But that's you know? why the two percent loan and the and the grant, four exactly. and a half million dollar grant. Because otherwise, 
Because if you don't get that, it's 100% out of our pockets. It's a, right. It is. It's 100% out of our pockets. So at, I at think three or four percent. I think the working group needs to, um, and and uh, Dave Prickett was very clear about this, and I would be if I were in his shoes as well. He doesn't want to hear from 2,000 people, yeah. or even 10 people, or even five people. And so the point of the working group is to work with them, and then it's the working group's, I think, responsibility to get the to information, yeah. get it to him, and feed it back, mm -hmm. rather than they start calling him and all of that kind exactly. of thing. So that would be the responsibility. And if you've gathered mm -hmm. that, and you I can have, get yeah, that and work with Kevin, mm -hmm. um, we'll get that, that makes out. the most sense, because certainly we want to keep people who are interested and knowledgeable, informed. Absolutely, so and they can we, inform us back. Right, and not only inform us, but also help create consensus to go yep. forward mm -hmm. in the way people will be ha you know, glad to go forward. So, right. um, so I, you know, I don't know what his plans were to do with in responding to all that information I mean, that's been sent to him. Normally we had set a meeting. I had to run out that time and you know, it was, yeah, there's no the last small meeting was meeting like, yet just kind of fell apart because I had to leave and everybody no, it didn't. It kept well, going no, when you, you guys <laughs> kept going but for me we didn't set a date well we usually every time we set a date for a second meeting for another yeah, meeting but let's yeah. let's just do that talk to David and get that going mm -hmm. and then um, so we can kind of flush out some of this stuff he mm -hmm. may have a lot of these answers ready to go mm -hmm. and data that we could send out but mm -hmm. I just love to have yeah. that I, I think it's critical for people to have faith in what the town does with, with everything but this in particular especially since um, there's been so much time and effort invested by mm -hmm. others. So if we can make sure that those questions get answered and come back through this committee and then whatever. We don't want to burden him, but we, we do owe it to the people who have you know, the spent the time and effort. Yep. So yep. I think it's important to do that. Good. So yes, setting setting up a next meeting would be great. So, so here I think probably my, my last question as far as this is concerned is, has a full set of questions come from the committee to us to filter down to Dave? No, there's been, there's been several questions and I think really they wanted to be able to form more questions, mm -hmm. but they didn't have the data to make those questions yet. And we may not be there at that spot, but I think they wanted like, okay, what's all this? Who's let me, let me pour through all this stuff mm -hmm. and build my questions, but they don't have anything to look at yet, right. really. Cause we so, kind of so just- So I think probably the question would be is, what are your questions at this point in time? Yep, and right when now. and when can and we'll we have take this? We'll take this block right here. These are your questions. The first we'll, question: When are we gonna get more information? That's really <laughs> where it's gonna go. Okay, that's, exactly that's really the first go. question. Sure. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So well, that's the main thing: is to when can we have some more detailed and, data? And since we've gotten questions asking for specific details, take yep. another look at those and make yep. sure that we get those answers. That's right. Yep. A lot of those questions would be answered in the also completing the application. Mm -hmm. Right, would answer but, but before it gets committed to an application, I, I think know. we need, yeah. Yeah. Well, but we could review the application. No, let's, yeah. let's, let's process this out, so it'll be. Okay. Um, could we jump down to complete streets? Sure. Well, then, um, well, just Mr. Arthurton is here. I mean, Kevin oh, has, Kevin's got a whole, the more. bridges and. Yeah, I just things. don't want Kevin to leave without Cool. Uh, this is just a draft conversation. It's going to be on your agenda on the 28th as well. Yep. I thought we. Uh, this no. is another draft of a policy. Yeah, because yeah. the last one wasn't signed. It, never it was, was signed, never adopted, and it wasn't and up to date. It's now no we longer up to date. Hmm? We did adopt. You keep saying that. I most of the minutes they I do know, not reflect that you but actually. We did so vote. well, we we've did updated vote a lot, and, and Diana's done oh, a lot yeah, of work. Oh yeah, no, so, I know. So I'm, we're I'm there fine now, with and I think she wanted us to review it for this month, like give it to us here so we could look at it, and then um, develop questions, and then on the 28th, have a public forum where, is it Valone? Uh, you have to vote, yeah, name? you have to have Ty a listening Bond. session. Chai and Bond comes to have yeah. a public kind of okay. discussion about it. Okay. discussing this about two years ago said take it under advisement and I kept going and going and going and I never, never found advised. it taken back up <laughs> so well, here we are and besides the rules have changed or the guidance oh no I changed. know they changed so I, I'm not it's just that 
It's frustrating. It is. It's really <laughs> yep. frustrating because we. I'm excited. Yeah, I know. You see everybody. You know, Sunderland's going for all their complete streets. They've got all this stuff to happen We're in. We're on and a trajectory just, now. We are. We're pushing forward. We're going to do some stuff. Good. I know that. You know, the town, the town common committee has been meeting a lot about. You know. I what know. we can do, do we're, they're kind of in a right bit now? of a, a holding pattern too until we get this going so that we can start laying out what we want to do and what we can do and okay because you know, i've got a boatload of questions very specifically yeah. to the uh town common is this sure you know, what what are the plans within the common itself you know which inadvertently yeah. would kind of tell me where the crosswalks are going to go. That's, that's my you biggest know. thing of trying to line this up, and I really need tie and bond with you mm -hmm. and our committee to sit there and go, where's, like, I want to get rid of that crosswalk coming out of Cheslicks because just a guy comes up to me the other day. He said he almost saw a kid get taken out there right. just last week because the you're coming out between it's cars, vehicles. not safe. It needs to be at a, at a, at a road end. And mm -hmm. so it's kind of, but I don't want to, so I don't want to create pathways. We have ideas on what we want for pathways there and materials, but I need to know how that ties into the comp, the, the, the streetscape around it. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't like, like it is now a crosswalk goes to no crosswalk or a, a pathway goes to none. But I think we're pretty close and I've got those sketches and um, we have, um, the chair, Kate Lawless, is doing some rough estimating right now to kind of get some sort of idea, because I really need some sort of dollar number to be able to put before CIPC for FY20 for funding some sidewalk improvement. And, and it's getting late in Under the season. Under what category? Yes. I don't know. <laughs> we need to get some money together to get it done. And it, I don't think it meets a CIPC category. What yet. does it? Money to do Crosswalks? Sidewalk? No, no, I think sidewalks. you said sidewalks. No, it doesn't. What, it's historic preservation, recreation. Sidewalk. So I thought they they no, need to no, view any. No, oh, CIPC amount. or yeah. CPC? Sorry, no, thought you meant CIPC. Capital. I thought you meant a community no, preservation. No, 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 okay. no. I just need to have some dollar amount to go before the board, so they kind of have an idea what we're looking at for you know widening those pathways and making them go to a crosswalk and making them safe. And I think there's some benches, like the Lions Club was maybe going to be able to donate a bench, or yeah. could we get other people in the community or businesses or to donate to a bench? Or, a minimum, because they're tilted. New ones, yeah, they're yeah. tilted and they're just bad. Yeah. So it's time to redo. But so that's kind of part of that. And so Kevin, whenever you know, I, I've been saying this to Diana, mm -hmm. and she has been trying to kind of finish. She said, "Look, I need to get the policy ready, then we can have this public mm -hmm. hearing and ha meet with the time bond and." hammer that stuff out, but I'm afraid it's going to be too late, and I don't want to wait another whole year to get sidewalks on that common. No, right. it won't be too late, because we can do it. We can Even if I can earmark, and then we go back and look at it and say, okay, we don't need that much, or we need a little bit more, whatever. Well, he, Kevin can help you figure out what that cost that's, might be. That's the main thing, is just <laughs> right. to get some sort of number for improvements of sidewalk there. Mm -hmm. I don't know the final plan, but... So I, I think probably one of my questions I have is... Concrete or asphalt? Concrete. Because right now, concrete, $164 a foot. Concrete. $164 a foot. Concrete. Long term. Okay. On the concrete. All right. Long so that, that small section con. over there. Or a paver kind at, of look. At, uh, from Cumberland Farms. It was $18,000. $18,000 for less than 110 feet. Kip's going to do it. I almost got that for free. I know. And that's without, and that is without granite curbing. That's with asphalt curbing. Yeah. I, so I'm viewing this as um, 50 year. Like, when are we ever going to touch that common again? This is our mm -hmm. center of our town. Okay. I know it's I expensive. I don't want to waste money. I just, but I'm just we're making investments so, for the future. So let me ask you this. So out of the three select board members right now, anytime I'm looking at sidewalks anywhere in town. Should I be thinking concrete? Uh, I need to know. No, so I, I think can plan. It, I think it differs. But I, I don't know, but I think it would differ. I mean, I'm thinking wherever I look, all over the community, when I travel mm -hmm. all over Western Mass, I'm looking at towns. They're always concrete, the concrete. and there'll be some brick. Mm -hmm. uh, That's because you're in the fancy Berkshire County towns. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, there are some other towns, but um, and some granite curbing. Okay. That's typically what you're seeing. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll be specific. Okay, centers. North Main Street. 
concrete or asphalt. It would be nice to have that repaired with, at, as an asphalt so we can get it done this year or next year, this coming year. If you can do that, then you're just going to do an overlay, mm. which is a which is a band-aid, which is fine. No, we, we but we your band-aid is going to be. I don't want to do band-aids anymore. Okay. Well, Trevor, so, I'm fine with it, but that's it's it is going to be quite a lot of money. That's why we're hoping to get some grant. Like, okay. what do you okay. think? Sunderland's no, getting okay. a ton of money. I know. But Sunderland also put in they put in asphalt, asphalt in yeah. certain areas. Yeah. I'm open. Right. I'm not like okay. I'm just I, I'm, thinking. I'm just trying to get an idea for for my own I'm, brain. I'm, to wrap let's have two so numbers. It doesn't cost me to get on things. Is what I need. You know, I need a direction. I'm not this. looking to blow money, but I just right. uh, we have not invested in our sidewalks in so long. I know. I just so want them done we've, well. We've mm -hmm. been doing this so long, saying it's too expensive to do concrete, so we do nothing. I'm, I'm agreeing with you. It's and and I'm that, open to concrete but in like our downtown, I would like some, but asphalt A little bit of band-aids on the, some of the areas that are really, tri you know, somebody could trip. That's mm -hmm. the only Unless thing there's another, there's no other materials, just those two. I mean, I'd love to hear from people who are doing this stuff all over Most the state. That's your two choices. That or dirt. Go back to the old fashioned. Truly 1673. <laughs> It'd be a lot easier to maintain. That's true. Um, you know, because again, you know, I'm starting to think about Old Deerfield. Yeah. You know, um, Old Deerfield, because we are going to be doing some paving out there next year. Or I should say this spring. You know, we're going to be widening things out a little bit. I mean, people are parking on the side. It's a mud hole. You might as well mm -hmm. make it permanent parking. Um, and in speaking with that, because I reached out to PVMA, Historic yeah. Deerfield, talked with them, say, you know, these are the general directions we're looking at. You know, and of course, you know, they'd really like to see concrete because they've, they've spent money, uh, their own money, to go ahead and do like in front of the Deerfield Inn. Yeah. You know, and that's all concrete. That's great. But as soon as you go north of that, then it gets broken up, you know. And at some yep. point in time, you know, there was areas that they went ahead and shimmed the high and low areas with, with asphalt to try and get it smoothed back out again. Yeah. Uh, four years ago, I went ahead and in the areas that we had major tripping hazards with the concrete, and we brought a company in and we did the grinding to be able to take the tripping hazards out. Yep. Um, but again, those are, those are specifically Band-Aids, you know. Right. And then you can really come into play, and some of this is going to take a little bit of engineering on how you're trying to f configure it out. And somebody go, oh, well, it's a sidewalk. Just got to lay a sidewalk <laughs> in. Well, think about Memorial Street. The end of Memorial Street where you got those little steps that come down, that whole embankment. Right. Slopes. Yep. How do, we, how do we go ahead and make sure that this doesn't get doesn't happen again you right. know and it's easy to say well just go ahead and take out what you got dig a little bit harder on the north hand side you know kind of smooth it out well i'm sorry but it's tipped for a reason so what are you going to do to stabilize probably this? have some so it, it's not a deal of going in there ripping out prepping and laying down asphalt right. or concrete it's it, there's a lot more to it mm -hmm. so um i just want people to and be that's aware where I'm hoping that it's Time bond will help a little bit with that. I mean, right. even just like in front of Jerry's, there's mm -hmm. like a couple of, it's a weird exactly. trip hazard step there too. And so how do we deal that with that? Now in turn goes to another question that I have is mm -hmm. arbitrarily we talked about going from five and 10 to Jerry's place. Mm -hmm. Concrete. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now technically, feasibly, we only should be doing a four and a half, four to five foot wide sidewalk. Now what do you do from where we leave off to the buildings? Well, and, I and think then if we go ahead and, and we say, oh, well, That's you know what, we, we really should go ahead and make this all right. the same because it's going to look a lot nicer, which I agree. Now the town's doing work on private property. Well, that, so a lot of that, How like Sunderland's, that? Sunderland's dealing with that right now, and they're getting, you know, um, easements from property owners to do that stuff, and that they're mm -hmm. doing that negotiations, and that's all through the Complete Streets progress, uh, okay. project. And... Um, like they, they were kind of holding off their town meeting until they f flushed out all those details sure. with the homeowners. And so all of that I envision detailed out through that program. Okay. And so that's going to include answer that stuff. What are we going to do? Are we going to have street lights? Are we not right. going to have street lights? Are we can have trees? All that stuff. How are we going to have our curbing? Right. Okay. Right. Slow down. Traffic. When you're in Old Deerfield and you're widening out, can you just be careful not to widen so many places where they have the drop off and pickups and all that? Because, Kevin, the, the, tree roots are already imperiled there they're they're already driving all over the top of them now already i know you might as well go ahead and i mean because we're continually going out there and repairing them i mean we're wasting our time and our money going mm. continually going out and chasing our tail up there i mean if if this is areas that they're going to be yeah but those trees are not going to make it 
Well, in that if you, the trees aren't going to make it when we go ahead and we redo I know, the sidewalks. I know, I know. Well, you know, I mean, what are you going to, because you really think about this. You got some of these larger trees and you got the tree roots that go out. Realistically, you come up arbitrarily, this is the tree and here's your sidewalk. Mm -hmm. You may end up coming back 10 or 12 feet from there and you may end up coming up for a rise of up to two feet. And then you're going to end up coming back down again. So you're going to have sidewalks that are doing this. Because to try and roots. avoid the roots. It would be fun on a bicycle. It would be cool <laughs> on a bike or a skateboard. You know? Um, well, I think yeah, there's a then, lot of Then thought. you have to be cautious on what, what your rates are because now you turn, now you start talking about ADA. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things that come into play. There is. That. There is. And I, I'm hoping that, you know, some help here right. to do that. But I, I agree with you. We need to flush and, that. And planting, out. like planting the new trees here in town, I mean, they, the technology has come so far that, I mean, it's, it's easy to go ahead and take care of it now if you're planting something new right. to make sure that those roots don't affect either your roadway, your curbing, or your sidewalks. Yeah. But trying to... Retrofit. You, you can't retrofit right. because the tree roots are already there yep. unless you move well, the Well, I just want you but to... I, I understand where you're coming from. I truly do, especially on the, the, the east side. Uh, the west side, it's, it's a complete and total mud hole right now. And yeah, because there's missing stuff there. too, right? I mean, even in the cross, the sidewalks. I remember. There's uh, no sidewalk even at Kathy the end Kathy Melnick of town. had said that you know, like, there's one whole section with no sidewalk still. Well, I thought and, that uh, was the true last section of of yes, historical so, gotcha. 1673 sidewalk was is that in front what, of that building like that. Is that what they wanted? I no. have no idea. No, no. He's are you pulling my leg? <laughs> yes, <laughs> he's being sarcastic. Being sarcastic. Sorry. <laughs> so I no I. Sidewalks are a big issue. It's a big, complicated thing. It, it doesn't is. sound like it, but I, I really want to focus on that. We've gone back to the original sidewalk. Yeah. No, I don't think that's going to fly. Um, I do have a couple quick answers if you want from Dave Prickett. Okay. All right, so summary of the grant applications for the two tasks as of authorized right now remain that remain now. The basis for a design, sizing, layout, updating costs, and preliminary design will be the next phase, approximately 8 to 10 weeks from authorization of a future task to be done ahead of articles for the town meeting and finish current task November, December, preliminary design phase, January, March, if authorized. So there's some quick information for you. So, and then we'll just get a date to meet up, kind of hammer that stuff out. Yeah, we'll still have a sit down, but there's yep. something quick to. So we need to have the, the board needs to take a vote to authorize to move forward. Is that what? That's pretty much what it's looking like, what I see move forward on future tasks to see what we're going to do but again this is this so is going to be this, the tasks that they this, completed this, for the study for this is going to be more dollars. right now information for you right now so that way you can start thinking about things we still should go ahead and have a sit Let's down, have sit down. Yeah, so so now out. now i've given you more information so now you can form more questions so now these questions that you form we can ask dave and we can come back with actual answers instead of this is what i think he means you know what i mean mm -hmm. And that way, we, I'm giving you accurate information is probably the best way of doing this, personal opinion. So let's have that small group meeting yes. and bring in these questions we've yep. received, get more clarification, clarity, and, and pass that info uh, information back out. Be, be prepared mm -hmm. to come back to the select board on the 28th, which is the next meeting in three weeks. They're not meeting again for three weeks. Okay. So that gives them time to address what, all the info that was sent him. Any other questions? Before, between now and then? What get together? With Dave? No. Uh, this is what we, we don't know. It was nothing was set. And the last one last quick did, question. Did you I write him about when when are we going to meet? No, a small I did not. group. Okay. okay. No. Uh, one quick last quick question. It's kind of more of like downtown area. Leary Lot. Um, any intentions on Leary Lot? That's yes. complete streets too. Yes. How far? Go All the way. Right. Well, uh, we ha I mean we had some that's an ongoing conversation. With, um, uh, leader lumber because we were going to trade some of the end for their to them mm -hmm. and then they were going to give us access to elm street okay but that's a long time ago that now. was a long time ago that was when they were doing the expansion and then you know that's where i think time personal. bond with you yeah. can mm -hmm. make a recommendation okay. yeah. Yeah. yeah i was just curious with I, your I, input yeah. Yeah. that makes sense a lot of what's going on some thoughts are to just right to clean that up to clean it up, you know, to take out the material, to go ahead right. and try and bring in the right material, to put in filter fabric as needed, to, the geotech fabric, a couple of gravel. Because right now, if you go a little bit further off that pavement on the left hand side, or I should say the yep. southern side, uh, four years ago I buried a dump truck in there. 
because it was so oh, soft. Oh, was that muddy? Yeah. So, so yeah, I'm, you know, it's just off the pavement. It's such a valuable chunk of land. You know, I mean, I know it's just a park a lot now, but it's, you know, you've got a good chunk of land there. It's deep. There's a lot of ideas we could do with that. Um, so, yeah, okay. uh, definitely so improve it. So please read this. You read it as well, the draft. And of the be complete prepared. sheets. Yeah, okay. comments or yep. questions so you can vote on it. It can get submitted. Mm -hmm. We right. can move forward, getting some funds and start moving. Do you, okay. Do you have anything uh, on the... And um, Kevin, too, your feedback is important. Mm -hmm. We had the bridge inspections. I'll be honest with you. I received all of these at right. 3.30 this afternoon. Uh, we just um, looked through real quick to it. I've been able to go ahead and breeze through them, um, you know, real quick, because I know you've got something that's supposed to be happening right now. Yep. Um, stock bridge. Um, there's not a whole lot in there. They seem to be in pretty bolts. decent shape as far as deficiencies are concerned. Couple when you're bolts, talking so. the hobby road, over uh, Mill Village, or excuse me, over Mill River. Uh, we have a few, some of the wing walls, railing, and approaching guardrails, a couple of small issues. Uh, vertical wing walls are misaligned up to an inch. Um, I'm not gonna be able to do anything about that. I mean, unless you start ripping things apart. Uh, the only other one that's in there that could really do something with is the plastic blocks are misaligned slightly from the posts, mm -hmm. from the W, W beams. Again, that's something we can go ahead and take a take a peek at. Um, the pavement approaches. You know, we've got a quarter inch uh, wide gap, which would basically turn into a, um, a crack ceiling. Um, upper road over the Deerfield River. You know, they had a routine bridge inspection. Yep. And there's a lot of M and P's in there. Um, M's are are uh, minor. P's are prioritized. To be honest with you, this bridge is slated for complete replacement within the next, basically the next three years. Um, but I was just want to ask you, do you think it was, it's going to make it? It'll yeah. make it. That's my, my personal opinion. I mean, because otherwise, there's, there's no seriouses in here. There's okay. no... Uh, so I, I know, I looked at it and I... There's no I, criticals. There's no structural deficiencies. I know. You know, according to this report here, you know, we've got a little bit of scour again. You know, they talk about a little riprap protection. That's an issue. Um, bridge railing, you know, it, the paint's peeling. Um, you know, that's why they're all miners. It's nothing. No, I was worried about the, uh, the crack. The repairs the crack. that we made? Yeah. The repairs that we made are phenomenal. Yeah. I talked with the gentleman um, that did the last dive on that, and they said they were really happy with the results. Great. You know, they still got a little bit of scour, um, but the scour is more on the other piers. It's nothing that's major at this point in time right Good. now. Um, you know, they're very comfortable with that. Good. Um, one that does kind of concern me a little bit is the North Main Street yeah. or the Bloody Brook. Yep. Um, Which we already knew. Again, the there's the only one that does concern me is the girders and the beams. And, you know, the painting and the coating, yeah, whatever. I mean, it's, it's paint. Does it need to be painted? Yeah, sure, whatever. But it's, it's not going to make the bridge fall apart. Um, but the two areas that they are concerned about with this is the girders and the beams and the slab. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start reaching out and finding out what it's going to take for somebody to come in, give them a copy of this, and say, okay, you know, ballpark me. Is this $10 or is this $100 million? I just need some information, you know, because um, I, I don't know how to rebuild a bridge, and I'm not afraid to admit that I don't know how to rebuild a bridge. That's not what I do. What, can, you, so, um, can you get that estimate and then... Um, we, we can put in, we can apply for the small bridge replacement grant. Again, I'm beginning stages. I need to find out how much it's going to be. Okay. You know, and, but, um, and is there, but again, the, mean, small bridge, the small bridge, the small bridge right now is huge. The waiting list because everybody and their brothers on I know, it. Yeah. I know. Um, and but, I don't want to go too far off of that, but collectively as a board, you may want to think about the next steps, which you want to do on the end of North Main Street. Because well, the, ish, the issues that were had in the past, as far as being able to bridge? replace that bridge, bridge. need to be rectified. And that is the reason why that bridge is not on anybody's plan, site, horizon, or anything. Just to, just to recap, the town walked away from that, right? Tyne walked away. It was, it was why shovel is ready. That? Abutters. The abutters. Didn't want it to because they were going to take there some were, property. There was exactly why I can't tell you, but it was basically I'm assuming it was loss of land. Mm -hmm. 
Um, it would well, probably go ahead and encroach upon the house. If you're heading north, it would encroach upon the house on the left-hand side. Okay. You know, um, I mean, because realistically, back then, it was going to be wide. Now, because technology, technology and or because regulations, now you have to have sidewalks on both sides, not just one side. Oh. So now before you had a bridge that could have possibly been only 35 feet wide, now it probably has to be 65 feet wide because you could have so much for travel lane, you could have so much for sidewalk, you could have so much for, for your guardrails, that whole thing. So what would have been 20 years ago is now probably increased by 25 feet in width, which is going to be even more of a challenge for that end of town. So really need to go back, look at the history, find out what the problems were, see if we can come up with solutions so that way we can go to the state and say, please put this back on the TIP program and because of the issues that we had in the past, here's a written documentation of what we've done to rectify the issues that we had last time. Because it's a huge, sour yeah. taste in their mouth. It's the amount of money that they spent, ready, shovel ready, for us to say, no, that's okay. Yeah, that's crazy. So, and they so, were angry about it. And there's people down there that are around still that were there then. And as soon as I mentioned it, they were like, nah, I don't think so crying in the sink. So why, um, this is a really stupid question, but why can't you just take the bridge out completely and just have a crossing? It's not allowed or regulation or something? Um, because that now belongs to the state, the railroad. The railroad does? The railroad, because that's now MBTA. Yep. That's no longer, like, um, they say no, because now that's another crossing. We don't want another crossing. If you want to go over this area, you're going to go over it with a bridge, okay. or you're not going to go over it at I'm all. I'm just curious. Very similar to Conway Street right over here. Yep. You are, that will never open again right. unless you close two. You close two, they'll allow you to open one. Huh. So I can't see where we can close two. Gotcha. Okay. I'm uh, just so curious. It's, it's unfortunate, but that's just the way it is, unless somebody can come up with a better answer. Well, at some point, it's going to be shut down because you can't. Yeah, exactly. You know, because you know, there's going to be a point in time. Because there's still vehicles that are going over there. It shouldn't be. You know, right. it's not the bridge itself that's the problem. It's the weight. The bridge yeah. itself is, is okay. It's the abutments. Mm -hmm. It's the far abutment is where the problem is. And sooner or later, you've got that big, heavy stuff that keeps going over and keeps jamming and jamming and jamming. Sooner or later, that thing's going to come to the point that you're not even going to get a car over there anymore. Right. There's going to be Jersey barriers. And now, if we think that there's a lot of traffic here in the center of town now... <laughs> Wait till you go ahead and you drop that out. If you think there's a lot of traffic on Hillside, North Hillside now, quadruple it at the very least. So I'm, I'm just trying to look to the future mm -hmm. yep. and, and try and head off some problems that may be coming because they're coming. It's just a matter of time. All right. So, I mean, if we, we think about what we're going to do and head in the proper direction, at least start, do something. You know what I mean? So if you liked, I'd, I can go ahead and I can put together, because I've already got a full folder of exactly what it was. I have the minutes of the meetings that were here. And realistically, uh, reading it, you can close your eyes and you can <laughs> visualize the people, what they're saying and how they're saying it. Um, you know. I have the folder too, and it has the, new, the front page recorder articles about of, you know, making the town look real bad. Yeah. It's just sort of it all ha coming right to happen, and then so town officials fighting it. Yeah. So then, I'm not then town officials. So I'm not trying to beat this to death, but it just my opinion is, yeah. is is I would move forward to try and fix our deficient our deficiencies. Yeah, and then that way it'd be a lot easier to go ahead and so, start moving so forward. So, Kevin, the, the issues were only just um, the abutters. Was Correct. that is that what it was? What Wasn't year was he that? a selectman at the time? That? I can't abutters? tell you off the top of my head, but it was it was the two abutters is what the problem was. Mm -hmm. I, I I don't see that being a changed issue really. Right. But there is no choice. I know. You know, I, know, I think, I'm just I think what it was. Yep. I think it was it was going to turn into eminent domain. I think is what it was going Would to have do. To. And just nobody have to. had the taste for that. Yeah. Well, when they're when it's shut know. down. Exactly. Somebody's going to so, taste it. So you know, I'm and, and I'm not trying to sound like a jerk or anything else here, but the bottom line is is. You have to look at the masses, right. you know. Uh, um, yeah. You know, if you've if you've got a if you've got a building that's burning, and there's a hundred people in there, and you only save ninety nine, 
well, you save 99, mm -hmm. one's going to be lost, you know, and, and I hate to put it that way, but it's a reality, mm -hmm. you know, so, so you've got tens of thousands of people that rely upon this area going back and forth between the school and work and the whole nine yards. Pelican. It's sure. affecting what, two, two landowners sense. compared to an entire town. So one question was, um, when, when was that bridge last studied? Like these are studied, these are our, it's not in this list. No, right? it will not be in that list because it's not our bridge. That bridge actually belongs to the state. That's why we're able to have the state take care of it. You know, it, it, I, I had no idea the state the owned state the bridge. The state was gonna take care of that? Yeah, yeah, that's a state bridge. Because that used to be five and 10, supposedly super long time ago. Okay. Or five and 10 bypass. So it's, it ago? sounds to me as if you're saying that the only way to really move forward is for the board to talk to the abutters and get them on board mm -hmm. to make it happen. Look, look at, that look would at be what needs to be happened. But again, you know, you go ahead and you look at the plans and what was then and what it's is now, be different now, it's gonna be different. Yeah. So you may, you know, and I just warn you to say, don't go in and say, well, you know, according to these plans, we only need right. 25 right. feet. Twice and then when they actually go ahead and do it, say, well, we need 60 feet, right. you know, well, and then why, that way. Why even get the town involved with that? Why can't the state just do it? They won't. Yeah. The, 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 wow, they, they did it down the road from my house. They want to fix the culvert, and I got a letter, and I offered to give them permission, and they still took my land. They said, it's too bad. We need to fix the road, and they just huh. sent me a letter, and this I is what they're taking. On the hill? No yeah. idea what the... At the bottom of the hill. Bottom yeah. the no idea what the thought processes are behind that. Yeah. All right. So, okay. Um, the only other one that, that we have uh, one here is uh, Whaley Road, Bloody Brook. Uh, for the most part, it's in pretty decent shape. You know, it looks like we probably ought to go ahead and redo some uh, guardrails. That's up and at some point in time, we really need to try and figure out. And, and again, this is something that's a little bit beyond me is how do we go ahead and we take care of the silt buildup that's in there? Um, and realistically to take care of the silt buildup, now you have to take care of the stream upstream. And then you have to take care of that little pond that's there also, which is going to start talking about all kinds of permits and it's, it, it'll be quite expensive. Do you think that's filled up quite a bit? There? Well, according to this, because it says according to this, pipe inverts are covered with silt up to a foot, foot thick. Okay. So, I mean, it is, it, it's... This is by the the pond that they stock for the fish and derby kind that's of thing? That's correct. Yep. Yep. Okay. So, and that's about all the inspection reports we have at this present time. Okay. I have two other things that involve you, if, unless you've got something I'm else sorry? right now. I have two other things that oh, involve sure. yeah, you. Oh, sure. No, I just put my Unless you've got something more. No, I'm good. One is you have uh, in your packet also the mass dot um, hearing that's going to be held here for the design project for... Five and uh, ten. Route 5 and 10 between Conway Road and, and Waitley, really going to impact this town. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be held here on November 13th at 7 p.m. Um, so be aware of that, correct? Mm -hmm. okay. So we have all kinds yep. of documents we're putting up on the website it? about that. Great. Right. Well, all they're really doing is repaving the road and changing the lanes, uh, the marking lanes, right? I do also believe they're putting in sidewalk, too. <clears throat> on five, 5 and 10? Correct. Oh. That's my understanding. I have not read the read it because that's all part of that with packet that she has there. Um, it says work as well will as also pedestrian. include new sidewalks, crosswalks, mm -hmm. and pedestrian signals at Elm Street, replacing signs, guard rail as needed, and repairing hot mix asphalt burn, and new pavement markings. Because um, when we were there, they were talking about doing a sidewalk from Elm Street all the way down to. Uh, like a little bit, very least a circle, okay? Um, well, I, I, I just wanted you to make sure you reviewed it and see if you had any issues with it. Yeah. I, I forwarded all of that, and I think, yeah, I hope Pat is putting it on the website so it will have the design. Um, you the can only look at it ahead of time. Yeah. If you need that, let me know. I can forward it to you. Yep. Um, also, this came with attached to it, it's a place to write comments and send them in. I suppose if you're not at the meeting. Um, also, okay. the other thing is I get I hear regularly about doing a, a 504 plan, uh, transit ADA transition plan. Mm -hmm. We're way behind other communities. We really need to do this. We can get a grant to do it. Um, uh, part of the cost of that, I don't think we. I don't know 
you know, where we'll get the funds. We probably, we might have some funds available with the way we've able to go get the Meta grant. I think I have other monies we could put towards this. Um, but we really need to do it. We're, we won't be eligible to apply for block grant money and other stuff. Um, so usually towns have a, a committee on disability. You get points for that and all of that. But um, some communities have combined the Council on Aging with the Committee on Disability. But we can't apply for grants if we don't start doing these prerequisites. I, I absolutely so, agree. I know. Um, you got to jump through all the hoops before you can uh, do it. I'd like the well, board to support going <laughs> forward with putting uh, an application in to get grant monies to do an ADA plan, a 504 plan. Um, can you explain a little bit about what a 504 plan is? There, I was it, reading they this. Do but a whole, uh, they do assessment of um, public buildings and facilities and. Um, See where the deficiencies yes. are? They do an evaluation and make recommendations. Someone told me. Um, Bruce Hunter, I think, told me that FERCOG does this. I wasn't aware that they, they did this. Hmm. These, I, I know a lot of consultants who do these plans. But first we need to do, uh, well, yeah, we need to do a self-evaluation. Part, um, part of it is also is, is having your sidewalks, you know, be um, even. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, yeah, yes. Compliant. But then you Accessible. go down, you know, graduated down to the street level. And so then they have get, that little bump kind yeah. of thing right before it so people yeah. know it's so a, they can get, a street. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. There's a whole lot of different things in there. But, um, so if are, we're doing anything, we want to make sure we're putting in ADA compliance correct. Yeah, stuff. Yeah, any, anything that I would be doing now, I would definitely be making sure. Like if I did anything with the sidewalk, I'd make sure it's ADA compliant. I know. There's no doubt about and, that. And Kevin, I really appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. I know you're on top of that. I. It's just, it's good <clears> that people <throat> need to know that that's just one more thing that we have to be aware of. And it's a little bit more expensive. Um, I get a quick question. Was was anybody here in town notified that they were going to be changing up the sidewalks there on Sugarloaf Street in front of the uh, post office? No, I saw them doing <clears> that the other day. Not a word's been said to me. Nope. Nobody said anything. I mean, granted, it's technically not our road, not our sidewalk. Technically. And they're Who doing that? concrete? It's yeah, it looks, yeah, it's looking like they're using concrete. In, in a classroom, too. It's so yes. Like, yeah. It looks like it's going to put a yeah, it so like I had not that, heard anything. That's kind of what I saw well, and I looked at, and I'm like, well, I'm surprised the, they wouldn't notify the town. The reason would, they did that was because people with uh, walkers and wheelchairs. Oh, sure, but you would it. think that they'd say something to the town. Yeah, at the very least, at least a courtesy. I say, mean, hey, would you want me to go to your land and go ahead and start doing stuff, not tell you nothing about it, and turn around and walk away? That's just plain came common courtesy. You well, like you said, it is their, their, their property. But the question is, is I know. does the state know? Yeah. Do we know if they've got the permits? Oh, it was, that? Fed, it was the federal government did it? No. no. It's all part of no, whoever is doing the, the what do you call it? The post con, office. The and post that post office, office, that's privately owned. That's leased. Oh, I thought the state did that. No. I, I don't think so. I nope. Did you say it's on the other? I don't know. Couldn't tell you. I know no, nothing about it. the post office is leased privately. So, so, who do we, know, who no, do we no, find know, out from? Well, I was going to try and hunt down the, the workers, you? find out who they are, and then start doing some the investigation from there you know, I, and or I can just go ahead and reach out to district two and say, Hey, are you aware? That'd be great. You know, I, wait till they're done. I could be do. mistaken, but I thought <laughs> I saw the news that it was the state doing yeah, it. Yeah, I think oh, it, so is. Okay. It, it was someone from town who lives right near there has yep. a walker and couldn't yep. get across and he complained and the state came and well, they've needed they are, some crosswalks said, there for sure. Yeah, no, I, I, I got no problem with it. It'd just be nice to know, you know, Mm -hmm. Well, related to that, some I've heard from the leasing agent for the postal post office property. They are were offering uh, that building, the old insurance building, which is on that property, to the town if we had any needs for it. And I've had informal conversations with people, and we don't seem to have that need. But if there is anyone in the community who might be interested, get building. in touch with me. They're looking for some more for a watchful eye than for making money. Right. Um, for a nice little building well, there. It's only, what, 5,000 you know, square feet? Yeah, it's not that big. Yeah. It's, it's got a bathroom. It's, you know. Yeah, but it would be a queue for office building, but it also would be really good for, like, the veterans groups and stuff. Right. 
That's why I, I mentioned it to the women's club because they come by and I said, we want a clubhouse? You know? That would be a perfect so, place yeah. for a lot of different functions. They had a, they had a business that, that was interested, but they were not interested maybe they in that would particular split, business. Maybe they would I know. I remember getting my insurance there. I would get my insurance there Maybe they would split it with the Boy Scouts and the Girl Scouts and the veterans or something. And There's they would so do it for like a token so amount of money. people that use the senior know, center for whatever. They could it's, it's have funny. a nicer I know, but, space. More, more no space. Just let me know if you okay. if you might be interested. Okay. Sounds good. Um, Thank you for all you do, Kevin. Sure. And Thank your you, crew. Kevin. All right, I'm gonna I'm you. gonna just do this ADA thing. We can't not do it. <laughs> okay. Have a good night. Thank you, Kevin. So about the Cheslick's Kino application. Well, Brian, uh, the Brian's town. here. Yeah. Are there ten? Okay. Yeah. Brian, I want to apologize for not calling you back. We had. I was uh, working on that drill we had on Saturday, and then we had Saturday drill, and then I had family. So, and then when I talked to Dick, he said you were on the agenda. So I was like, oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> well, I uh, usually always call back people. Thank you. All right. So we're coming up on a year here. And oh, asked, been can on I agenda. just just uh, state your name, who you are? And oh, yes. sorry. Yeah, you have to say who you are. Yeah. 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 yeah, but um, I after you introduce yourself, um, I just had a quick question before you start. So go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I'm Brian with uh, Two Feathers Restoration, at 707 Greenfield Road, north end of town. Um, here to clarify and complete this uh, dealer's license and correct it that we've been trying to take care of for about a year now. Um, so, when you uh, left me a message on the phone, you were talking about that you had a class one dealer's license. Two. You have a class two dealer's license. Correct. Which is down here, right? And and that you said the insurance was going up on it. So, um, I wasn't clear what you were asking us to figure out. I'll clarify that for you. Okay. 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 I'm just so what we need to do to clarify which got left off last November about this license and the questions and the why the license was done the way it was was because of lack of clarity of how this Commonwealth um, has licensing set up for RV businesses and there isn't any licensing so what we found is um, what can we do and how do we uh, proceed? And uh, with the RV industry, yes, we have trailers. Yes, we have motorhomes. I do van conversions, things of that nature. So we had, um, when we applied for this license um, with the help of others, they had, you know, mentioned that we should have the capability to also sell motorhomes in the used sense. And so we, that language was in there, and it was withdrawn in order for us to get a license, thinking that by doing that, at least you have a license, and I can proceed, and I can operate. Unfortunately, that's not true. Um, I've had this license. I've paid the insurances on it. I paid the bond, and I can't use it. It's been worthless. Um, the town did waive uh, this year's fee, but again, it's been worthless. I can't operate. Can you explain why it's worthless? So um, yeah, what happens right is, um, uh, Kip, you had um, suggested on here for a restriction to put the language as trailers. The license is for a motorized vehicle. Well, and so let, uh, let, me, let me stop I'm you just, here for a minute. I'm just let me give try you a little history, that. just in case you don't remember. Yep. You went to the ZBA and asked right. for, to open a trailer repair Correct. business, period. Correct. You were going to display 12 trailers, period. Correct. There was discussion about used cars. You said no. At you that went time. for site plan review. Because you were not going to have motorized vehicles, your building was not equipped to repair motorized vehicles, you were granted a permit to sell trailers only. You've been back here several times and you've been trying to work your way around this if you want to sell cars i have no objections sure 
but you have to go through the proper steps. And I have. You have, to, you have not. You have to go to the ZBA. I have. And you have to go to the site plan review for the planning. Board. I've already taken care of all the stuff that you have requested. I've spoken to you twice this past year to be back on this agenda, yep. and you have continued to disregard. And I've tried to communicate with you, and you've totally disregarded. No offense. You've never I'm trying to clarify this. I've gone through all the steps you've yeah. requested. Really? This has gone through building inspector at the time. He has clarified, including Dick, and says what has been done is not allowed as per what he has defined. Um, I have clarified that. I have stated that what our intentions were and the dynamics in which the business has progressed is where we came back to you and said, hey, this is what we'd like to do. Mm -hmm. That's where you suggested that we go back to the ZBA and et cetera, Correct. which we have done. So in that permit for this a, license. Do you have a CBA hearing? Dick has been here and session, spoken in the past. And said that you can sell used cars there. That is what Could you show it is. that to me, please? I do not have something here. Dick has spoken in I don't person care what Dick on this says. matter. I, if you're claiming that you have a decision from the ZBA. You should saying, have it in your files, as would be my assumption, based I, on their moments it doesn't of exist. their meetings. Then you need to get it, because it doesn't exist. You know, I'm, I'm sorry, but. You know, you guys have had issues with keeping minutes. I've had to go digging, and Wendy has been great at, I think, at one time finding minutes for one of the meetings that we've had in the past. So, so you the paid, issue at hand is... So, so just a second. So, uh, Brian, you paid to go through the process the first time. Yes. So, and so you went through a process a second time? The... Okay, no. so I came in for the licensing initially, and because of the timing... Right. So, I mean, you guys waived I, the Kippy, fee. I think what Kippy is saying is you have to go through the um, ZBA again. We went back to their meetings, and the discussions were held, and they saw no issue with from what we're requesting. Original, Correct. From the original. Correct. Room. Okay. Um, and you have something in writing saying that you can sell, you asked them specifically if you could sell used motorized vehicles. That was the subject. And they gave you a written decision. That I don't have it, anything in writing. Well, I suspect it that it's anything. in sorry, your guys' town's documentation. I did, this has been almost a year since this has been requested. Do you, do you and remember I did these when things. you went the second time, Brian? So we Not off the, the top of my head. I don't. Do you well, think you could it, get that um, information to Wendy so that. Actually communicate with Pat because okay. she is the administrative assistant, manages all their minutes, okay. their records. Sure. So well, if, they've made if you've, if if they've, you've they've gone back since you got the initial permit to do the recreational vehicles, if you're talking about having gone back, then tell her that's what you're looking the, for. Their minutes would I, reflect that, that there was no... Um, objection. No objection. No objection or no, no, need, right. to, no need for a second... Uh, you know, it, it was still encompassing in their original right. ruling. My, so, um, my biggest frustration is is that this is a year, and I understand Kip's frustration with definition, and your your argument has always been in the past, in our discussion, you have to have an oil-water separate. Come back with proof, and we'll clarify this. Well, I did. I brought this to you. I printed it off. It's easy. You've allowed a license to another business that doesn't have an oil so separator, and he's selling cars. My focus is a motor home, okay? My focus is still RV related, is sticking with my business plan. Now, like the individual who doesn't want to be named, who works for this town, who helped with this and suggested this, mentioned, well, what if you have a customer that has a trailer and would like a tow vehicle? That was his suggestion. His suggestion was to limit a vehicles like that to like two vehicles. That was acceptable. Everybody had no issues with that. We're not talking about taking 12 40 foot, because we have 40 feet in each parking spot designated. It's not talking about taking 40 foot sections of parking space and be trucks. We're not talking about that. We're talking about being able to sell a motorhome. I've had people trying to do consignments. I've had a turn away business. Um, I've had van conversions. That's shocked me that I've had people come in all the way from San Francisco a month ago to have us outfit the interior. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's what we're looking at. I've had, um, I've lost a contract with a manufacturer because of timing of this past year trying to get on the agenda when I called Kip. 
Um, well, Kip doesn't schedule the agendas. I was told that because you run the meetings that I had to speak to you to get on the agenda. Yeah, you're the chair. You are the I, chair, and Ms. Well, Ness is the one who had instructed that to me. Um, tonight's meeting, I did call Pat, and because um, I had left the message for Wendy to be here. My frustration is that I'm trying to run a business and trying to get this to grow. I have a lot of things on the table for expansion, as well as a museum. And this is just a little tiny facet that has to be taken care of. And right now, the insurance is up for renewal in a matter of days. This is something that really needs to be taken care of. It's another $500 or so, five dollars $600, to renew it. And I think the actual license, I think it's coming up like in November or something like that, whatever your renewal is. I wasn't at all the ZBA hearings that you're speaking of in the last I think two months or whenever you sure. said you've been there. But I am on the planning board. And Just you have not you. come to the planning board for site plan review for a used motor vehicle licensing. We discussed what you were going to do at those meetings. We talked about vehicles and their possibilities of gas leaks, oil leaks, and all the other things that we're responsible for doing. Right. And you said, no, we're going to sell trailers. And now you're coming in and giving us all these excuses about your insurance and this. To, if you want to. No, you're, you've been attacking me. I'm sorry, but you have been attacking do, me it, do it for a long way. time. I don't know what your issue with me is, can but you've a, been attacking can me. Can I ask a question? Yes, sir. So, um, so you have a class two used car dealer's license. And yes. when it was issued, it had a restriction to not more than 12 trailers. Correct. And what, what are you looking to do? We would still utilize 12 spaces. There's no change to that at gotcha. all. Gotcha. The only thing that we're wanting to change is to take that language off. I cannot even go to an auction to purchase even a trailer what, what because of like that language. Say? What would you like Just to, to eliminate say? that. I'm fine with if we want to agree to say two vehicles or something, but the fact what do you is... Want to, what do you want to sell? Just tell I want to be able to sell a used van that I can outfit for somebody that's wanting to have a tiny house type because we have a lot of yep. folks, young or even single women that are I've trying to outfit them. those little um, like Ford Transit yep. vans yep. I have, um, or the Mercedes vans. I've had folks that want to sell their motor home. Mm -hmm. The discussion in the past that Kip had brought up is what about the maintenance? You have to have an oil water separator. I'm sorry, right here in this information on a class two does not require that. Okay. And that, that has nothing the, to do with the site plan but review. But this has been your DEP. issue for the last year. I'm sorry. This does not require that. So we can clarify that, and that's out of the picture. Um, but that was a concern. Okay, if it has to be, and the other concern was, if it has to be inspected, what do you do? There's other businesses I, I can go to to take care of those issues. Not whatever. an issue. Yeah. So to me, that's a non-issue at this point. So what we want to do is still stay focused to our trailer camping business. That's mm -hmm. all I want to do. I don't want to use car lot. Right. If you come in and want to buy a trailer, that individual that suggested it to me, that's fair enough. I can go to the auction, pick up that vehicle, and sell it to them. Mm -hmm. Do I really want that sitting on my yard? No. I'd rather have a motorhome or that van that can be converted because that's my focus. Mm -hmm. Um, but we need to be able to cater to those so folks. What are the requirements of the planning board and the zoning board to be able to sell used vans and mo motorhomes and that kind of thing? First, of, well, for the ZBA, we have uh, that type of business is not allowed unless you have a special permit. In that location? In that location, in that zone. So, and is or that... anywhere in town, actually. Well, what's... The, what's um, wasn't there like a Richards or something? Do they sell cars there? No. I'm trying to think. So the Volvo place sells there's cars, there's whatever. It's a, there's the farm. Yeah. Is there anything else that sells cars in town? Is that yeah. You have two two places that I believe and, on and, five. But and that 10. location on five and ten, that commercial area is not all zoned of them, for. All of them had to get a special permit. They have to get a special permit. Mm -hmm. Now the Volvo garage was a new car dealership. Right. It's so that's a little a different, and they sell yeah. used and new. Right. Yeah. Right. And, uh, Richards at the time, um, you know. That would also require a special permit. For so he could aspect. request a special permit, and okay. it's up to the ZBA, and, the, and, and it's the ZBA that issues the special permit. And, and he for said he went part, to yes. the ZBA who felt that your original... Uh, it was acceptable the way we have it designated. Okay, because so we we're need not to track down the beyond. minutes yeah. from the second time you went. Yeah, this is like the third time we've been around on this, and I yeah. think that there was a 
lack of clarity in their minutes, so frankly, what, what if I recall. The, and that's been a problematic of, all What all would be all. the harm of just going before the CBA, calling an agenda item, uh, getting on the agenda, and asking them for a special permit to, to do what you're looking to do? I forget which board Dick is on, but I know he was on one of the boards, and he was at the meeting that I remember, and that's why he came here and spoke on. I forget which board he's on. Uh, Zoning, and he's not Zoning. on it anymore. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But at the no, time, so at the if, time. So yeah. if you did, like, if you got on their agenda, came to them and asked sure. for this. For clarification For clarification again. and documented yeah. minutes that this is what you want to do, and then, and then does he have to go before the planning board? Planning board as well and make sure that whatever you're doing meets the requirement. So technically, because um, see the issue now is I think it's the 13th that this insurance has to be renewed. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of an issue of um, what do you do? Do you pay the 500 something dollars? Or then, because otherwise this is a, a useless piece of paper. I can't go and buy a trailer from a... The insur you need insurance for what to have this. You need insurance. Yeah, okay. you have to. And according to the town well, bylaws, if, your... if it laps, it's double the fees. Well, then it make. I mean, if that's what you plan on doing and that's what your business is in the future, it makes sense to move forward. It is, that but way. if I get op opposition that says, no, you can't, let's say zoning comes back and says, no, nope, we're not going to let you have it, mm -hmm. now I have a license that, again, is continuously well, one, not well, then, good to me. But that's what you, I mean, obviously that's okay. what you need is the zoning board. To I say understand yes. that. And so I've been trying to get this it's done expired and last year, been know. requesting quite often. And um, unfortunately, until now, this has been the only opportunity I've been able to get back in front of you guys. Gotcha. gotcha. Well, we tried to meet the summer, and then we did. So we tried. Uh, and this. Uh, then I was out of town, unfortunately. Right. Then we tried, we tried. to <laughs> reschedule that. Um, yeah. And you have a new one of these, right? This because this is expired. I just did. Oh, I just took whatever was what in the file and photocopied okay. it. But yep. yeah. Um, I, it would just. Well, I w I would waiver any doubling of fees. Yeah. It, while you're going through this. Okay, and also we could, uh, just like we did last time, waive the fee wh while there is no use of the license. Right. Because there's no sense in paying the $90 if it's a worthless mm -hmm. license. So sure. I'm okay with yeah, holding off having you pay for the license with no penalty because it's until you get this straightened out. Yeah, because looking and at... I, and I do feel bad if you, if you um, went to the ZBA again and you didn't have the enough paperwork right. to satisfy um, this. So maybe they they can go back there. I mean, the majority of people are still on the board, so maybe they'll yeah, remember. I think so, yeah. And, and, and you could go back to your notes and Talk find out that. the date, so you have a reference of the date. And, and we'll look up the minutes from the date. Sure. Um, and so yeah, even though the, the date... Yeah. So even if the date... Yes, there's a couple meetings I know you were that... There? I forget which board that never made it on because they had camera problems, oh. but... Well, yeah. um, and so even if, you know, you can just say the minutes are not clear enough for sure. to write up the thing, could they just re review this and then, you know, certify the language, the proper right. language? And then... Um, uh, I think the planning board is too late to go to the planning board because the planning board meeting is tomorrow. Uh, but, yeah, um, yeah that would be too late. Yeah, is there a reason he needs to go to the planning what? board? Why, why do they need to go to the planning board? If the zoning board gives plan. him a special permit? He has to go for site plan review. Is because there a change? But it's not it any change. change? There's any no change. change to the site at all. And, I, and that's what um, I believe was clarified, if I recall correctly, is that it was strictly ZBA that I had to readdress, and that's what I had done. Uh, then um, I think it was mentioned that I should check maybe, with somebody else. Maybe you could um, call uh, Lisa, because this would come under our um, blanket coverage. I mean, you know, yeah. where we pay the fee. Yeah, but call her and ask her what. So that there's no need to go to the planning board. Or is there a need? Why would you not have somebody go to the planning board? Because they've already to been to the planning board, and if and, it, and we said no, that they had they could only sell trailers. It, it was a whole issue about the leaking of possible leaking of oil and gasoline, oil and separators. Uh, then it turns into a building uh, code issue. If he's going to put a vehicle in there where he's going to change the oil in it, you have to have an internal oil server. Okay. You know, all of these things, you know, you just can't sidestep. <laughs> I mean, if you do, I mean, come to our meeting tomorrow night when all these people are upset about Dollar General and we'll say, hey, 
who cares? You know, you went there once before. It's good now. Okay. No, let, me, let, I, let me yeah, let me He's not doing any of these. He's let me clarify doing, this, Kit. He's not doing this, this is, repair. This is, he's not doing vehicle, motor right. vehicle repair. He's doing restoration of the, like the, the, the outside, not the motor stuff. It was clarified during this whole process of setting up this location. There are no, and even I've had people come in and ask us to do it. And, and you can do an undercover thing. I don't really care. We do not do oil changes and fluids that are doing with mechanical, such as brake fluid changes oil changes, coolant changes. I will not touch that. That requires certain regulation of the state. You do more fabrication. We do fabrication, okay? That is my focus, rot repair, custom builds, brand new trailers. Mm -hmm. That's what we do, okay? When you're talking about oil dropping, you had us totally rip out a drain that had been there for over 30 some odd years. And so we ended up putting two dry wells to comply with our water. Not only that, because of our neighbor's property draining onto ours, we had to make sure it held their water, apparently, until we can re you know, do something about that, okay? You're talking about, oh, well, what if oil drips? There is nothing stopping you from pulling into my parking lot right now and parking the same spot in which those trailers are currently on display. I get it, but so I didn't make you're, you're bringing up things that are making absolute zero sense in reality, it is all approved pr by the planning board as parking spots. For what trailers. was clarified oh, was what it was intended for is trailers. Okay. But yes, you can park any vehicle. By state of Massachusetts or Commonwealth, it is a parking lot. It is a grass area. It's, per it's able to percolate water through all of that. It is still a parking spot. So. Um, would you, you would not need more than a couple vehicles you wouldn't anticipate? I'm only interested, if it's a motorhome, I've only had a couple requests over the summer to sell a motorhome. At this point, I only see the usage of maybe one or two, like van-like type units. The reality is the person who had helped with this was suggesting two pickups, for example. But when it comes to the, any of the other parking spaces, it can be a motor home. But I'm open to suggestion. I'm not seeing it as being a bunch of pickups. I don't want that. I don't need it. It's not my focus. But I do need the capability to be able to go to an auction, buy a used vehicle, and sell it to you for a towing purpose. I don't see that sitting on my lot. But you have to have that flexibility. Because you've got to buy it from the lot bring it to your shop. It's going to sit there for possibly a day or two to so get registration. If, if you go to the ZBA and ask him to amend the license to not, not have more than um, three, say three motorized vehicles sure. on spot, that would be okay? I think so. Well, I, I personally, I don't see that that really changes what's going on here. So why don't you go to the ZBA and get the language done okay. and then we can get the um, lawyer to weigh in on the planning board whether you should go to the planning board or not because I, I don't see this this is changes what you had originally um, you know presented and that was a discussion from a year ago or yeah. so so I well I'd want a decision I guess from from council on our bylaws and and right. how, and and how um, how this property would be regulated or licensed um, if it you know if if our bylaws require or a planning board requires you to have an oil separator and all that stuff I want to know that, that that's the fact and the it truth doesn't. well let's let's that, get that let's get that doesn't, it dick doesn't? dick had already let's clarified get that, that. Not what about the EP requirements are you kidding me not when you're not doing motor vehicle repair. It's a it parking lot. So, so you have a class two license. It, it that's you're allowed to do all of that. All right. So so Kip, so you're telling me that the new car dealer down the road has a well, well, separator well, you know in the parking what? lot? No one, no one, we're not, we're not knowing what what the requirements are per se. Right. We'll have I've, our lawyer weigh in on. This. I've actually clarified this when before we even came to Deerfield when we were in Greenfield looking at the old Lorenz building. Uh, we had signed a lease in the back of the building and I actually went to the state and I actually got a um, waiver because um, we were going to have two stalls 
inside the building, which required a oil water separator unit. And because of a traditional unit being quite expensive, um, he was able to sign a waiver. And I have that waiver. I think what the concern and the con and the issue is not that the oil water separator is required for the inside of a building if it's classified for automotive repair. We are not. I I right. think what what I'm hearing from Kip is that once you have a Class Two use dealer license, you can do anything you want. You have that ability. You don't. This is what I'm hearing from, sure. from Kip, is that you have that you ability don't. and you, you could do oil changes, you could do all kinds of stuff there, but if, you, if your building is not equipped to handle that, that's that where we run into the problem. Right. Is this that is, what, is that, am I hearing that right? Does that yes. sound? Yes, okay. and Kip has been saying that for over a year now. I provided you in front of you uh, Mass General Law Part 1, um, that is dealing with section 58 on chapter so I'll, 140. I'll have to read that. And class two is, is highly defined um, in this section of what is allowed under class two uh, licensing. And it's talking about, uh, just to clear, you know, s squeeze it down a little bit, it's talking about a used car. In here, if you were to read it, it does not talk about anything about repairs or allowing repairs. It is only pertaining to the sale of a primary principle of a used automotive vehicle. Mm -hmm. It is um, to protect the buyer that if I was to fail to pay off what they owed on it, things of that nature. It is strictly a license that proves that I have a bond that will cover those expenses. So in other words, yeah. it's protecting the end consumer. Mm -hmm. It is not anything that controls what is on a property how it is utilized, such as um, it's long gone, but down in Northampton, for example, and you take that little cut across to get onto Route 9, right on that corner used to be a used car lot. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. no oil water separate. There's no repair facility. You got Nick's Auto. Is, actually, they may have something there, but the there's been Caleb. plenty of car lots in the area. There used to be an old vintage car place on, on the same roadway further down, down. Yeah. and I used to know the gentleman. He didn't do repairs there. He just sold the cars. Um, so there is nothing in this chapter. I called the state myself, got clarification right, as well. Oh, oh, You've raised your hand a few times. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Shoot your knowledge. Now, my name is Rocky Foley. Uh, I live in South Main Street. My question is, if you do get the license and yeah. everything like that, you sell a, a used vehicle. Yes. All right. Uh, say f five days later, for some reason, uh, it breaks down, okay, mechanically. Sure. Okay. Somebody, uh, you know, pays to have it towed back to you and everything, then walks in and says, hey, uh, this engine needs to be repaired again. Uh, I mean, where do you repair it? You have uh, the lemon law that would come into play on that. So we would be responsible for those repairs. Okay. Because we're not a repair facility, I would then have to contract with somebody else to All do right. that so actual that, mechanical so that repair. Person would That's what the law would require. Right. So they have to have it told somewhere else. You got it. it. You right. got it. it. All right. There's consumer protections on that, mm -hmm. and that's where that lemon law comes in. In fact, I just had a customer I just dealt with with a lemon law on their camping trailer, and we ended up replacing the whole entire roof on their slide out. Yeah, I wasn't so, talking about that part of it. I was talking about the mechanical thing. part of it, yep. because if you're not supposed to be doing repairs, right. There, what the, you know, how, how do you take care of it? Yeah, there's certain regulations that the town doesn't control, but the state does, and you have to comply with that. Because with oils, coolants, because I come from the automotive field mm -hmm. myself, you have um, certain regulations that the state would do inspections and stuff on it, or they can't come in. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. So, it sounds this like we been, have, well. It's been a long-standing issue because there's been um, multiple regulations involved. Sure. Planning, ZBA, and then the select board as licensing authorities. Right. And I, I know it's been a problem from the beginning. It's a challenge, um, yeah. With interpretations. Yeah. Different people saying different things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And mm -hmm. here we are again, or still, or whatever. But yeah. I think there is a concern that you're wanting to do more than what you you're permitted wanted. to do, um, by the, at least by the ZBA. And right. that's why the language is in there for your... Class right. Two license. Right. So, and that's why we've gone the steps that we have in the language that when we applied for this, we brought it to you guys, explained what we're trying to do. Which guys now? The board the here board? Uh, okay. that I see in front of me. Okay. And um, it 
came down to the point where I was asked to go back to these boards, get clarification, which I did, and that's what finally now I'm able to come back, even so though we've had challenges getting back here to the table, um, to get this clarified. And you know, now it's a little more of a challenge because now it's time to renew those fees. And it's like, oh, now, you know, now they're asking for another $500 to renew. Uh, then the town's going to want their money to renew. And in this information packet, state regulation says if it lapses is where there's a double charge. So I don't know if you guys are able to even waive that. Well, no, no we're, talking I don't about, know. we're talking about the wave to, the, to your fee because to the R license. R license. Yeah, well, there's the state level bond <laughs> issue here that's at hand. Um, so well, I, I it's just compound calendar. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know how to do that, but I, I think um, I, I would pose a question to our attorney um, and find out, you know, I guess just for my knowledge and, and sure. to get this uh, flushed out, I think you have some um, work to do to get clarification from the ZBA, either get on their agenda, I would recommend getting on their agenda, or if you can, short of that, get something in writing from them that they didn't have any problem with you selling a used vehicle there. Um, and then we'll figure out the I think they're meeting the on the 15th, stuff. because they, 15th, okay. yeah, uh, we, there was, we had the special town meeting scheduled that night, and we canceled it, so I, mm. I th might, Impression was I wouldn't feel comfortable going ahead without having stuff in writing and no, a decision yeah. from from it's our board and then learning more about the planning board. It's just I just want to get this wrapped up, you know. Yeah, and done. I know. Now looking yeah, at I this, it says if when the serenity, because that's what it is, that ends up canceling uh, the municipality licensing authority notice of cancellation of the bond. You have thirty um, within thirty days of cancellation. That's number six. Um, from there, I have ten days to comply with um, getting that back on par. Um, well, like so, and I, I said, believe I mine expires on the 13th, I believe. But I'd have to get the paperwork the started tomorrow. The CBA's initial decision was very badly written and, and, and hard to interpret, but if I, I recall. I was at all of those meetings. Yeah. Yeah, Kip was at everything. And, yeah. and Go ahead. I mean, I hate to just keep dragging this thing on, but, you know, another thing with the planning board is that, you know, you... you you absolutely didn't comply with any of our Chapter 155, which is a bylaw that I personally hate myself. What's it's a that? Stormwater bylaw. We and followed everything, actually. No, you did not. In and what way? The the planning board decided not to make you comply with that because there were not going to be any cars. It was just going to be trailers parked there. I there was not going to be any gravel extended the driveway, which did happen. There was not going to be any more concrete. Uh, hold on a second. I think yeah. you're wrong, Kip. Well, you're that, very that's wrong. That. I am not wrong. All right, then who did you hire to do your stormwater calculations in? You had um, no requirements to do any storm calculations based on the surface Carol, in which was touched. What's our stormwater by, let's say? Kip. You know, it's everyone been, has to do it. Correct? I mean, I don't know why you're attacking me. I'm sorry. But I'm not this attacking has been you. It's going since we, we have at rules. This property. We have rules, and we we make everybody well, it gets, follow. It, it gets a bit much. I mean, I don't know how many businesses you're. You're. I'm sorry. Running out of town. I mean, come on. Where does it stop, Kip? I didn't Seriously. make these rules, didn't I? Just tell you, I hate the war bylaw but, myself. But you're. I'm what? You're saying it yourself. Why are you drawing it out? Let's get this clarified. I followed everything in which was required. The planning that was done for the property, the gravel's exactly where it was approved. So what has been overdone? Nothing. The thing, I, the thing that really gets me is that I'm here working for my community for and nothing. And I appreciate that. And I, appre and I try to do the same for everybody. I sat through hours of meetings listening to you say you were going to sell trailers that you repaired. Correct. And that was it. You would also try to get some other line of new trailers and sell them. They were going to be trailers, trailers, trailers. We were looking at it, yes. The people from the ZBA asked you about motor vehicles, used cars. You said no. We were not planning it. And like I said, okay. we were looking at so where the now business So now you're coming and, you, and you're trying to all this double talk, this, that, thing, accusing me of attacking you with you're the one that's caused all of this. And you can rectify it. Go back to the ZBA. Which I have. That, no, you haven't. I have. OK. 
Okay, well then bring the decision to us and then that's fine. Then you okay. go to the planning board and you do it the proper way for those vehicles and that will get approved and then we're all good. I don't have a problem with you having a license. I've told you that before. But you have to go through the proper process because everybody watches how we do these things. Sure. And that if, we, if we're not going to make you do them, then everybody else can do well, it. Well, no, I appreciate it. And that's, that's the way it should be. So, but you have to look at it from my standpoint. No, I don't. I have to look at it from the town's well, standpoint. Out of respect, you, 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 you know? really need to take a step back because on my point, you just accused me of not following my, my plans. We did. The gravel's exactly where it's supposed to be. And you're just calling me out saying that, no, you're doing this, that, and the other. No, it is done. And, you know, and I don't appreciate that. I, I know, but. Brian. But, Brian, listen. You, you went to the ZBA the second time. Sure. And so I try to get on the agenda for the 15th. I will do that. Wendy will try to get uh, some kind of explanation from the lawyer so it's okay. clearer. And you can just go back to the ZBA is. and say that, you know, you need something more definitive or the right. language that the minutes were not appropriate yeah. for you to get this information. Yeah. Okay, and then, then the lawyers will, dis, will sort out whether there is enough of significant enough change to warrant going to the planning board. Yeah, because I know, like, I mean, I agree. What we originally had plan for that property change and that's why when we came back for this mm -hmm. the language was different mm -hmm. and is explained so I'm not changing things up and like I said we'll go through the process mm -hmm. we need to well, you just said that the original plans had changed but now you say oh, now I'm not changing it up which way is that's it? that's not what I just said what okay. I'm saying I'm is, is when I, I first purchased the property and yeah. what the business plan was and that's what the property was going through all that process for is indeed what it was right when I went to file for this license the whole actual reason for this license was to get a, a dealer plate so I can go and purchase and bring back sure. originally I was given misinformation it was not from you guys it was actually somebody in the state and it got clarified after the fact that I didn't actually need a license to get the uh, trailer plate, actually. Oh. But this had already happened at that point. Mm -hmm. um, but it still made a point. In so order you, have a, you made a business decision to change your business to do right. This. And so you and went so through. I've gone go through the through process that. to okay. correct that and to be able to do an mm -hmm. additional. And that's what I'm doing. I'm not trying to trick somebody as it's right. being kind of portray well, as. No. Oh, so, so so what you have to do is decide how many vehicles do you want this sure. to be limited to and, yeah. and make a definitive decision on that so okay. that we and can sort of ask proposal. the lawyers yeah. is this significant enough change to warrant going back to the planning board after That's you've gone back to the ZBA to get a definitive okay. approval by the ZBA because okay. I, even though you've gone back a second time, clearly there's not enough minutes or yeah. notes or whatever. Yeah. Okay. And it it's too vague. Yeah. So you're, you're going to have to do that. But you will know on the 15th, if you can get on their agenda, um, that whether to go forward with this or not. And, and we'll move, try to move on this. Yeah, I appreciate it. You know, that. so that you can get an answer for your insurance. But sure. if, if I were you, I would renew based on the 15th, the outcome on the 15th, I would renew okay. your insurance because if the ZBA has approved it, then the chances are that it's probably, you know, the planning board is going to do the same thing. Yeah, because I've had um, the building inspector um, who enforces the rules already tell me to go ahead and sell vehicles, um, but I've held off on that. So to you're telling me that there was Mr. Kalashevsky that said to you, go ahead and sell vehicles? He is not the building inspector. Okay, could you tell me this who was, did tell um, you that? What was his name? Kyle Scott? Yes. Maybe? The discussion was with Dick, but their interpretation was the same, is that with It's not the, a significant. Right. Okay, right. But, but anyway. Well, I'm not the lawyer. It, just get your That's yeah. why I didn't go yes, forward. That's right. I'm not the lawyer. You need to figure this out. So if you get this... Um, determined that it's not significant enough, then you should be okay. So okay. I would, it would be worth spending the five or six hundred dollars okay. to renew your thing, because you can go forward with this. But right. you, you, I'm not saying it was your fault, but we needed to have definitive language we're all from the learning. CB, <laughs> right, to, ha to yeah. be able to, for me, to vote yes to sign this, on, to give you two or three vehicles or whatever. I need to know that the ZBA has approved this 
as not a significant change to your operation. Okay. Okay. So I'll go back with the clarification on that. We'll just thank you. Put thank in writing. You. All right. Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry. I'll it's also been work on our end to yeah. Look well, at well, it's, that it's a learning right. process because it's it's not clarified enough in the Commonwealth, mm -hmm. and they really kind of dump it with no language. Well, and it's confusing, obviously. Very. I I and your business even plan change question <laughs> a little on the phone. <laughs> It's a good thing, though. It's a growing. little, but hugely, <laughs> in terms so of permitting this, and licensing uh, and all. Kino that. application yeah. through Chesapeake. Thank you. What do we just need to respond to the lottery commission? You, you say nothing, or you or you object. You know, you don't have to. Uh, you, don't you don't have, have to, to do have an affirmative. Right. You've had one other since I've been here, okay. and um, I'm happy. To, I have no objection. Should, should we actually take a note, a vote on in that? No, I don't think we need a vote. What is the well, vote that we just, let want. me read the no objections. Let me just read this real quick. Yeah, I, I just make a motion that we have no objections. Okay. Hang on one sec. Let me read real quick. When I worked in Longmeadow years ago, they had a huge ob objection to it. <laughs> but I don't think you have, it was another establishment last year that to do it. It's over here. It's just a different form of lottery. Yeah. It, yeah. Isn't it, isn't it just, I mean, that's the same. They have a little TV. I yeah. don't know where people are going to sit. I don't even know how it does it, but. Well, yeah. I th they um, could stand there. Yeah, I have, you, I have you no have objection. You have other establishments that have these. Yep, I have no objection. So second, second my motion. Oh, I'll second your motion. Any further discussion? Nope. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so it's official that in the minutes, so there's no issues. Okay. So Carolyn, second. We already did Get that paranoid one. about not having good minutes. <laughs> uh, sewer abatements. So um, we we need to. Uh, I'm still trying to get time to write a letter to be able to put in with the sewer bills about our decision that we will not be offering what we've talked about every time we meet here. This keeps coming up and coming up. Um, at this time, we're not offering rebates on. Right. Irrigation. Right. That's just where we're at at this moment. Um, I don't have another policy on hand. We have another, you know, letter to us requesting again for us to take action on this abatement. Um, Why don't we? I'll draft a letter for you to yeah. review. But you've made it clear, right. meeting after meeting, that you, or at least two. This might be the third that you do. Your policy as sewer commissioners is not to allow for abatements when irrigation is the issue. Okay. That'd be good. Is that accurate? Yep. Assess? That is accurate at Capture. this time. Well, yep. No, you never say at this time. <laughs> Why not? You could never change your mind. I mean, that's the policy well, right the now. The point is you want to say that this is the policy. It is the policy. Yeah, and that's all you say. Oh. <laughs> okay. okay. Appointments. That's my guidance. Oh, that's what you hired me for. <laughs> Timothy J. Boland Jr. to a part-time police officer. We all got um, yes, I make a motion that we appoint Timothy J. Uh, Boland Jr. as a part-time police officer. Um, he comes highly recommended by John. I second that motion. Is there any further discussion? No. No. Thank all you and welcome. Favor? Welcome to Deerfield. Aye. Yes. Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Uh, do we have any new business? Let's see. Um, you have some other things in your packet that came in um, about the school. Um, you got your, um, well, first you got your email from Barbara with your temporary passwords to enter into gateway system oh, in order. I think I have. Yes, we get you know what? Gateway, to tax. Wait, I, 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 I didn't get a chance to respond, but I'm already in. Yes. Did she email those to us as well? Yeah, so, she did okay. directly. Yeah. I don't um, know anything about them. Uh, because the board will need to sign off. This is a change in DOR. Yeah, I, have, I have DLS gateway. And okay. So, off, so uh, when we get the LA5 <coughs> after we get friend. closer to setting the tax, or when we set the tax rate, that's just for me to have, so in case you forget. Yeah. So what do we have to do? We have to get on a computer. Nothing right it. now, but it gives you access to, to view. Right. Um, these are the, the financial GLS records, stuff. all yep. this stuff. And then when you've um, you set the tax rate, we're waiting on the assessors on, apparently the board now needs to sign off on Gateway on that. And when we get there, we'll help you. Can I, can I just yep. do that? Yep, sure. 
So I wonder if I should, you know, since I'm already signed on, should I just take over what she's done now, or I'll, have to, I'll talk to Barbara, because I'm already signed up with, for them. You're all on. I mean, bef I know, but she yeah. put us back on, so I'm on there twice well, now, maybe. Yeah, I don't. I, I, I'll check I, with her. I don't understand how, no, I mean, you, I, I didn't get my password then, or whatever. I don't know how to access it, so. We don't have to do that right now. Do you now. want to explain it to me? Yeah, time? so so you would just go to the website, um, and then you would sign in under, that's your password, and that's your username below. An, oh. And she Those emailed it to you. Yep. And she mailed this to just, everybody. Then, then now you have access to look at all the financials <sighs> on DLS website. Another password. I have so many. Well, um, you let me it's know, important. and we'll keep a record in the office. But you yes. know, you'll need to sign online in the gate in the gateway yeah. program. Well, we're here. Do we don't have to do that. We can do you that. You can do it from of... anywhere on your phone. No, no, no. But it can be part of the. When we get to that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Then I'm not going to worry about it. I'm hoping we can be there on October 28th to get people are already asking me about tax bills. But it's it's uh, some of these solar projects are are part of the difficulty in getting the tax rates set. So. Well, the only thing I'd, I'd like to speak to is, have we posted for the building inspector's job? Going about to. I just, I brought, I had personnel board meeting on Monday night. Hope Michelle's feeling better. Um, barely. What? Just barely. Oh. Um, and I had sent over the weekend them an um, email, including the, it's the um, job description. Unfortunately, I discovered after their meeting Monday night, it was still in my draft folder, so I sent it off to them. Um, generally, they review a position description when we update it, and we had council look at it. But ready to go um, the end of the week or next week, just get it yeah, posted kind of and all of that. We really need to, yeah, we're, yeah. It really needs to get filled here pretty quick, so um, yeah, if you could get it. Yeah, we need to look at a lot of things, how the puzzle pieces fit together. So um, right. we'll talk. All right. Um, I if I can change this. Do you have anything oh, you want to talk about? Oh, I just want to say um, change it we had new one in here. That an amazing uh, tabletop drill on Saturday um, at GCC. There was over 90 people participating, and we had a huge Deerfield table. It was just great discussions, good conversation. Um, basically, we have about three hours um, before water comes here um, if one of the dam if the Harriman Dam fails or one of the dams fail. Um, you know, there was big things that were discussed, like you know the evacuation of Beaver Drive. We hadn't really focused on that before. Right. Um, one of the big things that came out of it again is we really have to push to get people signed up for Code Red, so that we could. Um, you know, have a code red training that it would allow us to, um, you know, alert people at Beaver Drive, alert people in Old Deerfield um, that the, you know, that there's this dam failure or we're having severe flooding or whatever the event is, um, and then they would be at risk. So we, and we need to switch over our phones in that kind of an event to be able to switch it over to our emergency uh, operations center at the South Deerfield, um, fire station so what we'd want to do is when we're in the process of upgrading our phones we would want to be able to have that ability to switch that police number the 2606 number over to the fire station you know so there was and then there was little things like we were going to evacuate people on the 5 and 10 corridor, corridor down to frontier well we'll have to get porta potties because guess what the sewer the sewer plant's gone um in that kind of an event. So, I mean, it was really good discussion to talk about things that would be happening. And, um, and I, it was a Saturday, it was an all day Saturday event. And the number of people that showed up was really great. And I was just really proud of all our group. And, it was a good um, group. It was very productive. Yep. And so when we have the after action report, um, we'll go over what's in that and, and the things that we wrote down and um, we'll have another meeting, and I would assume pr relatively soon. Um, the National Guard drill 
was a bust. It was supposed to be Thursday and Friday, and they switched it to Monday and Tuesday, and you know, people had time off on Thursday and Friday and not Monday and Tuesday, and they really weren't involving us anyway. And so anyway, I'm hoping to work through whatever comes out of that plan um, through the Regional Emergency Planning Committee, and um, we'll, we'll try to figure out stuff. The, the, the MAC, the multi-agency um, <coughs> coordination center, is, is, has good um, interaction with the National Guard. So we'll get something out of it. It's just us as an individual town actually drilling with them. We're not doing anything, which was really sad because we were really anticipating like having South County EMS work with other ambulances to, you know, when roads were closed and move things around and none of that happened. So I'm kind of really disappointed even though there was a lot of time and, and effort put into making it worthwhile for us as locals. So I think our meeting was much, much better. I know. You know? It we, was productive. It was our, really good to have our, that core our, group of people uh, yes, come together. Yes, our table was and plan, that's, that's yeah. the most important part. Yeah. Who headed this? I'm just curious as to, you know, this has to deal with the Deerfield River and flooding possibly on the Connecticut River. Yeah. Do they do the statewide for other areas as well? Or? Well, I went to, um, I'm on the Homeland Security Council, so I asked the council to give us $25,000 to do this tabletop. And that's what oh. Saturday was, was mm -hmm. the um, facilitated tabletop. And we had about nine, you know, there was 18 communities um, up and down the Deerfield River involved, and everybody had their own table. And we um, had a huge group. Yeah. I mean, it was great. Yeah, Deerfield. Um, group. And, and it was kind of good because Deerfield Academy's plan was to march the kids across the street and go up to Eagle Brook. Well, it, it would take uh, the water about three days to go down, and it's, it's fine. Kids can sleep anywhere, but... They don't have enough food. They don't have enough food. And, and I said, like, an I have been involved in food inspections up there. I said, you used to have your big room, big warehouse room full. I said, you only use about 25% about it now because they're feeding their kids, you know, just, you know, fresh, a lot more fresh produce and stuff. So they get just in time deliveries almost every day. So they, don't, they can't, they can take bement still because that's only like 50 kids that are, that are boarders. But they can't take 700 and something. So if, kids if they get, you know, what we've family. kind of figured is if they get uh, staff and families and stuff. If they get uh, knowledge of, um, you know, there's going to be an imminent d dam failure. If you know that, you still have time because it hasn't failed. You get the kids to frontier or somewhere, somewhere else. Um, if it's an immediate flood, you head off the road and up, you know, just for safety. But if you can plan ahead of time, you get them out of there because they'd be stuck on that hill and there's no way to get around. Step for going all the way across the ridge or something and back down. It's just yeah, well, there's because it gets flooded on the back side. It gets flooded on the back side, and all of five and ten is underwater. Right. So, um, but so it was I interesting mean, to run through that it, whole drill. You could still put the kids up there. You would still you, they would have enough food for a day or so, and you could get you know helicopters to airdrop food or whatever. I mean, you know, there's ways to around this, but. I'm just curious, do you know, do they have, have they ever done these types of uh, preparedness things like in uh, communities like Palmer, Munson, uh, Thorndike, yeah, so. I mean, uh, Bondsville? I mean, well, if Robin Dam ever failed, it's... Oh, yeah. They do them all over. Yeah. yeah there's all a over lot. the country, all yeah. over the state. But they do. It, it takes money to make it a realistic... Mm. I was just you kidding. know, you have, your, you have your injects, you have, you know, planned events and... And you have observers and evaluators and stuff. And then you have the after action plan that gives you all the things that you're supposed to do to fix. Okay. Um, and so I know. it's. Why don't you use it? We did one because I'm very nervous about Great River Hydro. They don't have. My alert, they did an alert before the drill on Friday, never got it. They've done alerts because of the vigilant guard. Well, they had said Never that they it. only send it to the, um, they send it to the <clears throat> dispatchers, and if we want it, we need to notify Shelburne Control that we're going to want to hear that after. So, so we're going we to have to do stuff on our part to make sure we, that we, we hear that. We have to ask a question. Sure. You mentioned a few things that were follow-up. Um, mm -hmm. You mentioned Code Red. 
Yes. Uh, was uh, Adam Salkolowski at this event yes. as well? Yes. Yes. He's kind of our point person for he that. Is. So is he going to follow up on, on that? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Good. We're, we're going to try to get a training because we need to get more people. Yeah, they do trainings all the time. Yes. Yeah. There was a. And and we and we need to figure out how to do, break down the groups because mm -hmm. nobody knew how to do that. Nobody did. So. Did this group, uh, this thing you had on Saturday, did it involve the ham uh, radio operators at all? Um, well, question. yes, question. they usually, they, they, yeah, they're, it was a discussion. Team. Um, Chris Myers, uh, he's, you know, um, he, he and I are always pushing the ham radio things and he was involved, but we were, um, focusing in on the communities versus the communications, which is going to be a whole separate part. And, and, um, and I got my license because, so I could complain because the state was going to eliminate the ham radios a couple of years ago and they put it back in because we did effectively protest the dropping of the ham radios because they said, oh, everyone can use cell service. You know, half, half the hill towns can't, don't even have cell service on a good day. So anyway, the ham, we've been writing in the ham radio operators f from that ever since. Are you one? Yeah. Oh, 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 okay. <laughs> I'm, yep. I'm trying to organize the, the ones we have in town sometimes. because we put a tower on the on the police station and it's set up in the police station and you, people can <laughs> operate under my license, so we can we can do that. It's just uh, if it's pre, if preset, I'm fine. I just don't do it enough to to know how to to do all the other things. So. If you are interested, oh. you, can, you can take a test or not, <laughs> and then you can operate. Because we are looking for operators. Anything else? No. Public oh. comment? Okay. Any public any comment? public comment? Public comment. Hey, Mike. How are you? Doing well on yourself. Good. Mike Colleen, 112 Sundalen Road. I was interested in joining the town's build and advisory committee. Great. So I. So I hope think, to be appointed. Do they need to? Does he need to put in a? Um, just need to write a letter. Just write a little letter. Do Same you have one? Oh, great. Oh, good. Oh, nice. Do you want me to read it? So no, that's okay. No, we just have that's to have fine. a that you're proof that you're interested. <laughs> <laughs> great. I else? did actually have, last year, um, related to that, last year we did have a committee set up. Uh, if you remember, I yeah. asked you to. I'd written a CPA grant for this church and all of that, and we had a little committee. And Deb D Dacious, who you had appointed, said she is interested also in being on this committee. Okay. We were talking, and I said, did are you still who interested? Else did we who else You'd was appoint, on that You had appointed the Historic Commission people because you were looking at it as a Historic yeah. Preservation Project. And I recommended her because I knew that as a 30-year uh, community development planner, she was very familiar with major public building projects and all of that. So she had agreed to. Um, she came in for something else. I said, oh, you live in Deerfield? And I said, because I knew her. And I said, would you be interested in this? And that was going on. It was a year and a half ago, at least, probably. So at any rate, um, I keep meaning to remember this, but she's still interested. So. In being on this committee as yep, well. Yeah, and there's no, Great. we haven't set any limits of numbers, but Great. there should be a workable number. Perfect. Cool. And, um, well, that's great. Thank you. No um, we, we, we are waiting for town meeting to authorize some money first um, to do this. Well, we've building. already made some appointments. Yeah. yeah okay. See, I'm trying to think we made... Uh, Carol Morrow, Julie Chalfont, Bruce Hunter, John Petruner Jr., right? So far? Right. So okay. we could um, add Mike and um, Debbie Dacious. Can, can you ask her to send in a letter, too? Uh, she should um, probably have a new I letter. I asked her. I'm not sure. Um, I know she was on the old one, but she should have a new one. Because it's not on the agenda, do we wait until next? Yeah, so we'll just we'll do it. We'll point you on the twenty eighth. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for volunteering. We're going to wait till after well, town meeting to get them going. Get some right. money. We have a motion to. Move. Well, wait. Um, I just got this information tonight, so I was going to pass it on to Dick. It was in my box. It's about the. Um, I'm going to uh, take the this spraying. Way. 
Oh, okay, thank you. Um, the MSDS, I, 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 I'm not sure if it's, it has all, if it's the That's for the UMass brain? Yeah. yeah. I never wrote a letter because I don't know who you're talking about. <laughs> Yeah, who to is who it? about right. what? But it, then I read the newspaper UMass. article, and it sounds like things are moving. So right. I, I'm not going to write a letter to someone I don't know. <laughs> well, we should we we should send a registered letter. Well, just, how did they catch this? Did Dick t reach out to somebody? No, I guess they just heard it from our meeting. I oh, guess. perfect. The so, reporter picked up on it at the and meeting, then he, and, and then, he did oh, the great. research. That's hey, how. So, there you that's, go. Um, that's how it works. Exactly. I'm, so could we send the registered letter to this? the um, person here, the superintendent of the research center. Could I read that when you're done? Yeah. Or could maybe we, we'll get, could I give it to her to get make copies? I, I, it oh, yeah, sounded yeah, yeah. like yeah, yeah. it's all set. I don't understand. No, it's they, not set. They agreed to do it, give oh, notice to the, the neighbors, article. and that's the article. Yep. But right. I, I would like them to tell us how, what, what are they going to do. Shouldn't we have the health inspector do this? That's really their job. Mm -hmm. No. It's, it, we're the Board of Health. We're, we're, that's why I had so us. So you're going to go do it? No. Thank you. I appreciate it. We're going to have them, we'll, we'll write them a, a letter, and then they need to come and discuss how they're going to set up notification. What I'm saying is I don't know who and how to write, a, who, where is this going to? It would go to the um, superintendent of the research center. Who's and listed I, in there? And I don't. Where's the well, address and all that? I don't know. Yeah, yeah I, I read probably. the article. Oh, it's still already. not clear oh, to me. Okay. Yeah. Well, it would just be at UMass. You could look. I'm sure he's listed. You could just look him up and see what his address is. My spare time. I'm sorry. I'm just feeling very, very overwhelmed. Yeah. And well, these are I little mean, things that usually administrative staff do, and I'm doing it all. So. Um, Speaking if you could help a little new, more with, with this kind of information, is, is I can write new, a letter, uh, but I get pieces problem. of things, and then I have to spend a lot of time doing things that you could be more okay. helpful with. I'd appreciate no, that. Uh, uh, well, I don't mind at all, Wendy. I just, you know, we voted on October 24th to send a registered letter. I didn't to know, know who? You didn't say who or where or anything, the, so I didn't know. To the research to. center. I know that's not enough information okay. for me. I, I will look it up on okay, the internet. Write a letter, put it in the mailbox, research center. So <laughs> I will look it up on the internet. Would you put it out on the ham? Oh, you're not a ham radio operator. <laughs> Motion to adjourn. I'll just sit yeah. here and read. Second. Second. All those in favor. Aye. 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 Thank you. Welcome.